Can I hear you say? It is that realm uh, that everything that the Lord desires, and uh, uh, we make ourselves available vessels. And uh, Maria He's able to dispense Himself. into the situations, uh, in our lives, uh, in our ministries, uh, in our businesses, uh, in our families, uh, in our nations. Uh, Bless his name. Just lift your voice to him. Above all the gods, we lay our cross and worship. Oh, be lifted above.
precious blood. Thank you for your finished work on the cross of Calvary. Let your hand be lifted over your children. And as the day goes by, we come to the revelations and the realities of what you've done for us. Even in Jesus' precious mighty name, we call it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God a clap of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. to see you again. Amen. Amen. I hope God is keeping all of you. I hope you are putting the devil in his place. Amen. Are you putting the devil in his place? Are you sure about that? Praise God. Say legalities. Part two. Uh, we'll be having different, you know, trenches of this matter as time goes on. And today, very, very, very important part of the, of, the, of, the, of the service. Some people ask me questions about what to do after realizing the guilt, after realizing the unforgiveness, the bitterness, all the things that they've done that they feel has caused the breach in the spirit. Um, today, I want you to also prepare yourself for God to make you a repair of the breach. A very powerful prayer topics. Let me clap for Jesus and the man of God for prayer topics. Amen. Yeah, very, very powerful prayer topics in regards to, you know, the repair of the breach and all that. Um, so today I just want to, the reason for this is, if you remember when we spoke about Matthew chapter, Mark 11, it says that have faith in God, then it says, but whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. Then he says that uh, if anyone shall say to this mountain, having not doubt in his heart, be that moved to yonder place, it shall be done unto him, and he shall have whatsoever he what says. You will have whatsoever what you say. So you cannot have what you have not said. Are we here? You have whatsoever you say. But the Bible also ended by that, that text in verse 25 by saying that, but when you stand to pray, forgive. When you stand to pray, what? Forgive. That means that you can believe God, confess, declare, want, desire. But the moment you do not forgive, your faith will not work. Your faith will not work. So many Christians are frustrated because it looks as if their faith isn't working. But it is a, it's based on lack of forgiveness. Now, when we say forgive, biblical forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgive and forget is not biblical. Can I say it again? Yeah. Forgive and forget is not what? Biblical. Forgetting, for instance, when God says he has forgotten your sins and he will remember them no more, it is not the antiquity of the fact that God has pressed a lead button in his mind that he never saw you do something. No. It means he holds no record. And to him, Anytime he sees you, the blood has handled that matter. Can I put it this way? Memory is as strong as the emotions attached to it. Is the reason why somebody will have a father die and they'll go for the funeral and they'll go like, ah, your father is dead. Why are you not feeling anything? Why? There was no memory. And the memory is because there were no emotions attached to situation. I'll give you a typical example. When you go to a country or you go to a new location and you are driving to that place, as long as you've not gotten to your destination, you don't even remember how the streets look like. Because in your mind, you are going to the party. You are going to the function. You are going to the location that you have put on GPS. When you get to the location, the moment emotions are triggered, excitement, happiness, memory starts. You start storing things. That's why some of your strongest memories are things from pain. And the reason we are struggling to forget is because there is an emotion attached to that memory. Mm. I'm showing you how to forget. So it means you have to learn how to delete the emotion attached to the remembrance. Else you will never forget. Be careful what pains you. If you don't take it, it to stick with you forever. I'm serious. Uh, you, you laugh about it, but it's the truth. You will never forget it. 
So anytime you tell God, love, help me forget, it means God, let the emotions vanish. You know why? The moment I have a new emotion, a new experience, it will overshadow what is emotionless in my memory. All the things I don't remember, or I struggle to remember, or I'm dealing to remember, the moment there's a new emotion, there's a new feeling, it, it will delete easily. What was once? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Are we here? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 So legality is, is a very, 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 very important area that many Christians overlook and override. Now I'll say this. In the operations of Satan, Satan operates at a high level of legality. In fact, the things you call an illegal occupation by the devil is actually based or entrenched on illegality. So actually, Satan cannot appear in your life if there's no legal basis. Hey. Are we here? Yeah, yeah contrary, to, contrary to what we have taught before. Uh, most of the operations of Satan are on legal grounds. <laughs> they are on legal grounds. And I'm going to get into... Some, some uh, try and see if you can handle it, then we'll go, because there are dimensions to this matter. And there's one thing I'm going to tell you today. Huh? There are a group of people, hmm? let me not say it, but so that you don't, you don't get lost before I start what I'm going to say. So, legality is a very serious thing. Now, let me start by explaining something I said last week. Last week, no, two weeks ago, scene of angels, right? I spoke about how Jesus multiplied, no, it was prophetic service. Yeah, how Jesus broke the limitation. I, I had about two or three people asking me questions, so I think I have to address it before Q&A, you throw it to me. <laughs> so let me preempt your potential questions. Are we together? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, so let's go to the text again so you understand what I was trying to imply. John chapter 6, the verse number 5. There were two people who gave response to Jesus Christ when Jesus spoke about feeding the 5,000. Actually, in the Greek and even Passion Translation, he says 5,000 families. It's 5,000 families, not necessarily men. 5,000 families. Okay, 5,000 families. So, let's read together. I want to go. Next. Now, so Philip is now communicating to Jesus Christ, not on the premise of the fact that I know where the bakery is. But Jesus said, where can we buy bread? And the question was directed to Philip because Philip was from that area. So he said, Philip, where can we get bread in this area? But Jesus was asking a question not because he didn't know what to do. Uh, Passion says he was proving Philip's level of faith. That means that there are questions God can ask you. Ezekiel, can these bones live? So anytime God asks you a question, it's a test to see for you to also recognize where you stand yourself. Can these bones live? Are you sure you are ready? It means God is asking you that there is a certainty you have that is a false certainty. Hey, are you here? Okay. So Jesus already knowing what he had to do, uh -huh, so he can stretch for this with God. Now, go back to King James. So, Philip here is communicating the absence of capacity. That even if we get a whole year's wage, we can't feed these 5,000 families. 200 pennies is not enough. Then verse 8 speaks of another guy called Andrew. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, Look, there's a lad with five loaves of bread and two fish. Look what I say after that. Read, read. Let's go. No, go back. Go back. In the same. Two small fishes. Next. So, Philip is describing the absence of monetary power to possess or to buy and feed 5,000 families. Andrew is saying that what we have is not also sufficient. So, one is communicating the absence, one is communicating the insufficiency. 
Please note what I just said. Can we note what I just said? Are you sure? Wonderful. Now let's go to Luke's account of the story. Because I'm coming to explain it in just one sentence so that you get it. Philip said what? 200 what? Penny worth. It's not. And from when shall we buy this bread? So 200 penny worth is not enough to feed these people. They are too many for our financial resources to handle them. Then when they finally found the five loaves of bread and two fish, Bible says, Andrew now said, it's also not enough. What is it to these people? Five loaves of bread, two fish. Then the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, the, the, the translate, the, the, yeah, Luke 9. Let's go there. Luke chapter 9. What did I say? Luke chapter 9. Quickly. Yeah. Then he what? And what did he say? All right? No, not one. Verse 14. Verse 14. Sixteen or uh, fifteen years, and they did so, and made them to all sit down. Next, now go to the Passion Translation for here. I want to show you something quickly. Passion Translation. Speaking the language of the Spirit. How we read together? One to go. Huh? Now, wait. You notice he's using in the presence of his disciples. Because he's come to do something that is like a Philly Kadoji thing. You have to see what I'm doing. What does he say after that? In the presence of his disciples, he does what? He broke off pieces of the bread and fish and kept giving more to each disciple. That means that the supply was not one time Jesus broke and they left. They kept coming back. That's what it means. Oh, are you understanding? Yeah. He kept giving. It means that any time they fed what was in their hands, they came back to Jesus' hands. Oh. So the multiplication was happening in his hands. Are we together? Yeah. They kept giving more to each disciple to give to the crowd. So kept giving more indicates that when they give what is in their hands and it's finished, they come to Jesus' hands and carry more. What I'm trying to tell you is this. I told you to notice two things. One was the insufficiency of money and financial power to procure feeding for 5,000 families. And the second was insufficiency of provided resource to feed this. These are the two apparent and true limitations for which five loaves of bread cannot feed 5,000. So Jesus is actually now breaking. No, if you do that, you are wearing them. Don't worry about me. Because uh -huh. they need to see. So no, 10. Turn it to them so they can see how it was before. Thank you very much. So it means apparently that there are two major limitations that is preventing or Jesus wants them to see that he's going to overtake or overdo. The absence of resource to pay. And I may have a problem with Philip because Jesus, the money Jesus has, you shouldn't even tell him that 200 penny worth is not enough. That means we need a lot of money to feed 5,000 families. Then Andrew Nato says that the fish and bread we have is not also enough to feed. And Jesus himself knew what to do. That indicates that Jesus was aware of these two apparent limitations. So when he lifted his bread to the heavens, he was breaking the limitation of its insufficiency to feed. That means... What I was trying to tell you two weeks ago was this. When you get a thousand cities, you must break and lift that thousand in thanksgiving to break the limitation of the fact that only thousand is the highest amount that has hit your account. So that in breaking that limitation, you have thousand in your bank, but God is able to multiply thousand in your account, thousand in your hand, so that anything you need to do, you do beyond the thousand's capacity. So you get thousand salary a month, but you have broken the limitation of insufficient funds and insufficient or the absence of funds altogether. So I have thousand every month as salary, but I've broken that limit so I can build houses. 
Because the problem was there was resource. But he said five loaves of bread is not enough. Hmm. Oh. Please, I've, I've not compounded the matter. I've helped you. That means that you can work in a company that pays you 2,000 a month, but you can break the limitation of 2,000 CDs a month and be doing things that a $15,000 job gives, can do. It means you own a car without your salary. You will have a house without buying cement. Do you understand? You my bow is killer. If you don't break that limitation, because you see, I'll show you today. A lot of you, a lot of you don't realize that the power of God is according to. Now, the literal translation or the very most depicting picture of the word according to is in preference of. That means that if you prefer that all you can do in life is based on your salary, then that is what your salary will cap you at. And that's where a lot of Christians live at. So they're excited for a 3,000 Ghana CD job, but they don't realize that 3,000 dollars CD doesn't do anything when you are married. It will be fine because you are single, because you left 100 to 3,000. But that is the limitation. The limitation is not in the fact that God can do more than, God can do more with you with just 3,000. The limitation is the fact that you have determined that 3,000 is not enough to get the thing done. So what it means is this. He prays so that the feeding of 5,000 is not reliant on five loaves. Because the best five loaves can done is for 12 men. If you split it two, plus the fish, the best five loaves can do is 12 men. The best. So Jesus said, what 12 men will eat? Let 25,000 eat the same. And let there be left over. So what you are saying is this. What your friends collect and enter debt, I will collect the same salary and I will enter profit. That is how to break limitations. <laughs> Somebody get in it. So you don't receive. I will show you something today about read, being. A, come on, let's go to eyes. So, so, you know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The word breach in the Hebrew means Perez. It means Perez. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. All right. Say, I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. Say, God has given me control over a lot of things in my life. Hallelujah. What Jesus died for were not people that are to be subjected to pain, confusion, and failure. Only heaven will tell you the level of your involvement in your own failure. Oh yes, only heaven will show you the level of involvement from your own self in how you feel. Only heaven. Because if, if, <laughs> if God died and all of Satan's power was independent of your inclusion, then Jesus didn't die well. What I simply said in simple English is that if Jesus died and Satan can attack you without any involvement from you, then it means Jesus didn't finish the work. Are we together? So it means that if I'm being under attack, I said to you some time ago that the first attack is a certain lowering of spiritual standard. It is a certain confusion of spiritual posture. It is a dimension of self-infliction that should tell you that without your participation, Satan cannot mount a proper attack. Because if you understand the kingdom of darkness, they have limited resource. So they don't waste it on improbable targets. That's why a man can be tempted without a desire. So Satan's first attack on you is to work your emotions before he can bring the physical thing in your life. So every failure started from your emotions. Hey, I want to preach this message like I have to preach. Of your, your emotions everywhere. Anybody can press your button. Oh no, then you are, you are, you are volatile human being. You can't be volatile. Like anybody can press your button. No, 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 come on. My emotions are scattered. You cry anyhow. 
Every small thing you weep. Every two minutes you are assessing why somebody didn't smile the way they should have smiled. You are everywhere. You will be manipulated. That means that, can I tell you something? The moment Satan realizes that, oh, you want everybody to laugh with you, he will let your enemy smile. And they will be killing you and you will not know because you are moved by sight. So if you're not careful, you attack somebody who is serious and thinking of their life, thinking they are your problem. Then the one who is smiling and choking you every night, you think they are not your problem because you are moved by emotions. <laughs> Our Lord was not moved by emotion. The Sarah Phoenician woman, Matthew 15, came to Jesus weeping, my daughter. My, and Jesus looked at her and said, sister, food meant for children, we don't give to dogs. How insensitive. Lazarus is sick. He said he will not die. They come, Lazarus is dead. The Bible says he begins to preach. Your cousin John has just died. Jesus changes location. He moves to another town, continue the itinerant ministry. Because you see, to work well in this kingdom, you need to let your emotions be under the control of the spirit. Otherwise, anybody can emotionally blackmail you into nonsense. One day I spoke to a lady and she was telling me, hmm. my problem is I don't know how to say no. I said, why? He said, when the guy says, hmm. <laughs> he, said, he said, when the guys, you know, so was, it, well, well, my wife and myself were having a conversation, another wonderful sister in the Lord. And she was telling us a story about how when she was in say, Italy or somewhere, a lady came to her and said to her, I said, oh, you know, anytime the man asks for it, I, I just have to give it to them. And he said, hey, why? He said, you know, you see, it's like food to them. I can't say no. So some women think that sex is food to men. So saying no is wickedness. Uh-huh. Also, some of the stories I hear, the men will say they have a certain sickness if you don't do it. <laughs> so it's like, it's a pity something. Like, I need to help a brother out. <laughs> Manipulation. Should have slapped him. <laughs> Should have slapped him and told him you will die. You will die with your sickness. What do you mean? <laughs> your waist is not an infirmary, eh? It's not a medicinal bank. Your waste. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your waste is not in poo. Do you know in poo? Yeah. yeah. When you have malaria, they put you in a cave and they cover you in hot water. Your waste is not in poo. It does not cure anything. The boy is manipulating. Because you see, your emotions are everywhere. Some of you can't go past someone's physical beauty. You, yeah, it's true. When you see a guy who fits everything you did, it's like you are confused. Like you are, you are stunned. My friend. And man, you, when you see the lady, her shape, it's like, mm. <laughs> I'm coming there. Tell him I'm coming there. <laughs> oh yeah, because you see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, 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 so, so breach is like, is the word break, to break, to break forth, to break through, to break a, a pattern, breach. Now, it also, in the days of Ezra, in the days of Nehemiah, and even in Chronicles, when they were repairing the temple, the Bible said they had to repair the breaches in the houses. It speaks of leakages, breakages in the roof and the buildings, that's, that's also a breach. Now, in this original text, the word, in ten, sen, sorry, the word breach is legal. It's like an infraction of the law. What it means is that when you use the word breach, it means the reason he was named Pharez in Genesis 38 when Tamar was giving birth to him was that he was not supposed to hold his brother's leg. So he was forcing out of protocol. So they called him Pharez, which means breach. What that means was that breach simply means a break or a distortion of a law. Now, it was not lawful that a baby would be coming out and another would hold his leg and say, come back in. Then he would rather come out. It's a breach of the normal thing. So anytime you hear breach scripturally, he's speaking about, that's why in 1 Chronicles 15, you know, David said in verse 13, 1 Chronicles 15, 13, he says, what, what do you say? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, so his brother came out first and pulled him back. Now look what he says. Yeah, for we what? 
the, before the Lord there was our God made a, a breach upon us. For we sought it not afterward the due order. So anytime the due order is broken, we call it breach. And life is governed by laws. Listen, whether you agree or not, life, look, you can eat nonsense. You will use the washroom till you lose your soul. Have you ever? Oh my God. Asafu, you can see your soul is departing. You say, don't go. I need you here. I need the energy of Almighty God. Hey! Oh, who has visited that place? And your soul, it's like, it was like a memorial service. Your spirit was leaving you. You say, come back. Leave me not here. <laughs> is that whether you ate knowledgeably or ignorantly you have breached a law that's why in court ignorance of the law is no excuse the fact that you didn't know does not stop the law from working I was going to preach at a camp meeting I think two weeks or three weeks ago, when August began and I was conversing with Mama D or something happened I just grew. Next thing I realized, I saw a motorcyclist policeman behind me. He said, hello, sir. I said, hello. Is there any problem? He said, you just jump red light. He said, is that so? Where? He said, just behind me. I said, oh, I was not even aware. But the fact that I was not aware does not deny the fact that I jumped red light. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the problem is that we think that the fact that in times of ignorance, Acts 17, 30, and 31, God winks at you can get away with everything. I'm going to show you something today. There are things you need to do eh, to, re to re reverse. Oh, shabobo katalias. What if you answer to Jesus Christ? If you think you have heard legalities, eh, there are layers of layers on the message. Oh, yeah. Today I'll give you one or two. You will see that you have to be very serious in life. Yeah. Please, if you, any of you have that message where I mentioned, I think last year or two years ago, I mentioned the death of the queen. I think at Airport View, I mentioned the death of the queen. When the death of the queen occurs, and I think some years ago, I don't know, four or five years ago, before Ephesus, I made a statement in a certain meeting that when the queen dies and Billy Graham dies, something will happen. Billy Graham is the keeper of US. The queen is the keeper of London, of England. When they die, something is happening. Don't sleep. Something is happening in the spirit. You see, your ignorance will not stop the Antichrist from stop coming. You understand? Yeah, that's how you wake up one morning and Corona was finding all of us. We didn't know. We were coming from a, a, a certain country in, middle, in, the, in, the, in the East, Middle East. And people were wearing masks in January. Before COVID started, though, we were coming in January. People were asking, what is all this masks about? We were like, ha, 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 it's not in Ghana yet. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Oh, Micron. Oh, 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 oh. All of them, they came. <laughs> Monkey paws, they came. But you were ignorant of it. Hmm? So I'm sure people went to the hospital and they said you have COVID or monkey pox. They were shocked. So your ignorance does not mean that your body will say, ah, we didn't know. You didn't ask for permission, sir. So since we came into contact place, you cannot touch us. You, you'll be touched. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So the ignorance... It's a serious matter. And that's why I'm starting with my first point. And I'm, I'm not, it's not a first point because, of course, we are doing the repairing of the breach. Now, in Isaiah chapter 58, the verse number 8, see what he said. Very powerful. We've used it many times about true fast which the Lord has got. He said, when you do the true fast, then shall your light break forth as the morning. Thy help shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Well, next, next verse, verse 9. Then thou shalt... And then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and the Lord shall say, Here I am. If thou take away the mist of thee, the what? The yoke. And putting forth the finger and speaking vanity. Next, 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 next. Verse 10. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry. So he's saying that doing good to the, those who are deprived, hungry, and struggling. And bringing some kind of illumination and joy to them that are in obscurity. He said, Then thy darkness shall be as the noonday. Verse 12, verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Listen to this. The Lord shall guide thee continually. 
and shall satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a water garden like a spring of water who's so he's saying the fast that god calls joel 2 says consecrate unto me a fast verse 13 consecrate unto me a fast so when god calls a fast and you're obliged to that kind of fast if you link up to that fast so we are doing vegetable fast and you are not eating anything but vegetables <laughs> of you said you didn't know we're doing better as we're adding banku and fufu it's your cup of tea no 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 we can't force you in the new covenant we don't force anybody but it is to your own disadvantage you're going to understand something today so he's saying that the moment you do all these things you become like a water garden verse 12 then he said in verse 12 and thou shalt be of thee that builds the old waste places thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called so this is not an angel doing this thing. The title repairer of the breach is for the Christian. And the restorer of parts to dwell in. What it means is this. I will say this prophetically. Our generation is the generation of the repairers of the breach. A lot of you have been born into families and systems that are very dangerous. But God has anointed you as a repairers of the breach. You need to posture yourself like that. You can't make the mistake your mother made. Because you know too much to do what they did. They didn't know. They didn't know. You know better. Kebalabash. Subalabayetes. So we are not preaching something to you that's based on your personal sense. I don't believe in that one. Or oh, what prophet say I don't. If like don't agree, don't agree with gravity. When the scientists come and stand here, for instance, do you know that? Do you know? Do you know? Now. <clears throat> May the Lord give you anointing to open your spirit for all things. Yeah, because recently I was studying something about astrophysics and I realized, I realized, if the world had too much gravity, do you know what will happen? It will fall inside in a big hole. Because there will be too much pull to explode into a ball and the earth will destroy. Gravity is pulling, poof, to just burst. At the same time too, if it had a little less gravity, the planets will roam. It can't be held together. They will move in different places and will not have planets. In fact, when the planets appear, they can't stay. They will vanish. Because they can't stay in orbit to spiral them out. And if the force of electromagnetic energy is 1% more than the stronger force, this astrophysics and language, there's a force called the stronger force. The moment is 1% stronger than the stronger force, no one can live. You don't know that it's, ele ele it's, it's electromagnetic forces that causes sweat to precipitate and stay on your face and fall down. There are some forces, yeah, that's when we enter rooms of lift. No, you go to space. You can't sweat. There are some environments you can't sweat. The, the forces don't allow for your body to function a certain way. That's why in space, they calculate the light as light years. So if you're on the moon, for instance, you slow existence by three quarters. So by the time you're on the moon, if you spend 11 years on the moon and you come to the earth, your child would be 22 and you thought he should be 11. I should get this. Because the number of years you are spending in space, so you realize that the more you stay in that realm, the younger you are from your friends who are on earth. Oh, uh, this is how you add the word of God. So it means the more I stay in heaven, Amen. the younger I am from those who are living. Are you another? That's why Jesus said, I'm from above. Oh. So the higher the realms, the slower your aging. Oh, glory. <laughs> That's how you learn the word of God. It's too much science in the Bible. And this is one of the things you should use to fight every useless atheist. That will come. When I say useless atheists, are atheists who are by mistake, they became atheists. Others have determined that they'll be atheists. That's the uselessness. Because I'm saying useless not because of the word you use as insult. I'm saying useless as in regards to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. It said the powers of this age which is becoming useless. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by useless. Yeah. Now some of you, yeah, now the Bible are finished. Yeah, they are online. Hallelujah. So they are becoming it's a useless. <laughs> <laughs> the next time he says, I'm useless <laughs> according to first Corinthians. <laughs> <laughs> are you understand what I'm saying? The uselessness is this. 
the dimension of exactness cannot be done by erratic big bang things came together somebody are so it's so precise sir slightly above it will burst slightly low planets will scatter it, it has to be precise somebody wrote it that gravity should be nine point exactly so that everything will be fine you know why we are struggling with our weather system it was said about a month ago that the earth is spinning seven times faster yeah the f is going shum, 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 faster so that's why it's becoming like the day is becoming shorter yeah. <laughs> don't even, the lord is hastening his time <laughs> yeah. i gave a prophetic word about the euphrates drying yeah. it has come on cnn that they've gone to the euphrates and it is drying up spirits are coming out you think you have seen anything i told you that when elizabeth dies the queen huh it's not the cocoa butter that will become prince charles cocoa butter <laughs> Something is going to happen. You think it's about all this Queen Elizabeth cocoa butter? You see that brown one you've been using? On best Saturday, you know, on the Prince Charles cocoa butter, 100% moisturizer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I heard Ghanaians went to the book of condolence and they went to their passports, <laughs> signing just in case they they will say, oh, all the I say <laughs> almost see a British for woman name a year year in Ghana for them. I heard they did a one week in Kumasi. Queen <laughs> uh, Elizabeth one week. Hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, I'm the repair of a bridge. See, I'm the repair of the bridge in my family. Because you see, I just said to you, everything operates by a certain law. Now, there are laws that are operating. There's a law that is behind your aging. It's called the law of entropy. That means that the older you get, the less available, useful energy is made for you. That's why the older you get, the weaker you become. It's a law that's working. There's a law that's working. There's a law that's causing you to, to increase the way your face looks like. Your aging, your wrinkles, it's a law. So whether you agree to it, no matter the injection, Botox, collagen, anti-collagen, SP15, no matter. I know. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I know. Don't work ignorantly. When they say SP15, you ask, what's that? Then they'll tell you. So zone, whatever, some screen. Well, yeah, okay, okay. Then you are aware. I see if I don't know, ask my wife. What's that? Hallelujah. Mm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Before, <laughs> if you like, don't ask. Very soon, they'll tell you it's lip balm and you come with red lips. I bought lipstick for you. I'm going to say lip balm. Hey, but my mom, I know you're pink. <laughs> but you're wearing full lipstick. Yeah? Don't try. You should know some things. Hallelujah. So, all I'm trying to tell you is this that the breach is a, is a breaking of a law. A lot of us are struggling from a law that was broken. Now, I'll show you why. Now, the breaches are, or the law, or the breach breakers are usually people in authority. People who are given opportunity to have, you know, Uzzah could break the law because he was a priest. Your father, your father's father could break the law because as the father, he is the source of your family. So some of the battles you are fighting, it was legally contracted. Do you understand what I'm trying to bring your mind to? So if you don't understand the legal dimensions to own, it's like court. You can't use an illegality to negate a legality. For instance, you need somebody to come and testify on the witness box. And you realize that if the person testifies, you lose your case. It does not mean kidnap the person. You can't, you are not, <laughs> so you can't use an illegality of kidnapping the person or killing the person. So there's no more case. You have, you have breached a law. So that's why actually two wrongs don't make a right. It's a legal statement. It's not a philosophy, it's rather legal. You can't use a wrong to correct a wrong. You have entered double jeopardy. So the only way to undo a legality is by another legality. So a father stood up one day and said, my children, I have entered the Freemasons. I've entered the secret society. And I need to enter the next dimension. I need to enter, you don't know this. You enter the next dimension. Yeah. And in entering the next dimension of power, 
I need to make some sacrifices. But I'll tell you that here you don't need to kill anybody. Just write the names of your successors. Oh yeah, some of your names are in lodge. You don't know. Oh, you don't know. Your names are in places. Your grandfather, your father, they wrote your name somewhere. Ah, bruh. <laughs> And he could do that because it is a legality. That's why when we are prophesying to we say your grandmother did this, your grandfather did that. There are some legality, and it's not illegal because they were the owner or the matriarchs or the patriarch of your family. So when they were selling all of you, they were right. No, though it was a wrong action, it has legal grounds. Oh, but that is Kobono Mosha. No, don't joke at all. Oh. Don't joke at all. These are things you should rise up against because you see, it is on the premise of a breach that God appeared to Gideon in Judges 6 and Judges 7 and said, mighty man of valor, but he said, I'm the smallest from the smallest tribe in the smallest of Israel. How does God call him mighty man of valor? And he said he's the smallest. Breach. So when you are living a breach life, you have potential, but it never manifests. People will call you. You are close to the deal. And something will change overnight. A breach is working. Oh, you must repair it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A deal, a toast. This is, no, this is what you have to be provoked to. You are near marrying, but it never happens. Every guy who dates you. And he's, I told you, if it's once, it's a fluke. If it repeats two in the mouth of two or three witnesses, you have gone beyond fluke. Two guys did the same thing and left. Mm -mm, you are in a breach. You must be angry to repair the breach. Because if you don't repair it, it will escalate. Because you see, I told you some time ago, some people are ordained the repairers of breach. Your children might not be. That's why I said something prophetically to our generation. Our generation is at the precipice, now hear this, of the redefinition of a woman. The forcefulness of all kinds of things into society. We are seeing it being birthed in our days. That means that we are them that are designed by God to stop it. If we allow it to be birthed, our children are not anointed for this. They will have to live with it. Oh, hear me well. <laughs> hear me well. So you don't sleep like that for your children. And there's nothing painful as the punishment of what you birthed, punishing you for what you did. That's why Hezekiah said, if my children will suffer, I will be dead. So he, he found it easier. But there's nothing painful that before your own eyes, you know it is the battles you pressed that your children are suffering. Breach. Today you pray to break that. You will repair. No, some things must be repaired. Because what I know you or not, I told you that they're ignorant. I will show you. You see, so you just get this point where. Are you here? Say, I'm a repair of the bridge. Oh, I can't hear. Say, I'm a repair of the bridge. Oh, I can't hear. Say, I'm the repair of a bridge. Because if you don't repair it, chances are that it's following you everywhere you go. What do you have that others don't have that they are going to America, you can go? Tell me. No, explain to me. What do you have that others have? What don't you have that others have that is making them get car that they dash to them? Tell me. Yes, you are a boy. Other boys are, don't say that girls sleep to get job. That is a very poor man's evaluation of life. Oh, girls don't sleep to get jobs. Some are very smart. Some work hard. Some, there's a covenant their fathers had with their, their, uh, their friends. And based on that, that any child you give birth to, I'll help them. So there's no something. It's not every girl who is driving a Benz that slept to somebody. Stop that lazy man's uh, explanation for everything good that happens in someone's life. And can I tell you something? If you criticize anything you, you want, you will never get it. Some of you are here. Uh, ah, what, this guy is some way. You, if you don't, you will never marry. Ah, so, look at this guy's height. How he did this talk? Maybe I can't talk. Eh, you want to. Somebody likes a short person. What is your business? You, you did, so because you don't like me, I should stay single. Hey, hey. Terry, what do you think? It's not the best. If you don't like me, leave me in peace for somebody to like me. Oh? 
And you come and also tell you that he's too short. He's too short. Sister, sister, sister. Advise yourself. Not all of you marry a tall guy. How many tall guys are in Ghana? I'm just 6'3 and half, almost 6'4. I'm not up to 6'4 inches. I'm 6'3 and 3 six three and three quarters tall. And most of the places I go to, I realize I'm virtually the tallest person there. That tells you that Africa, we don't have height. Do you know in America, there's a basketball player called Steph Curry. Me and Steph Curry have the same height. Me and Steph Curry have the same height, yes. I'm telling you. Alan Iverson is just two inches shorter than me. Iverson is 6.1. Michael Jordan is six inches, six, um, six foot six inches. Kobe Bryant, around the same height. When you see their size, they look like normal height in basketball. Steph Curry looks like a short person in basketball, but he's my height. That means when I go to America, I want to play basketball. I can't, I know I see me bouncing ball. Who are you? Who are you? Because when you're going to dunk, a seven foot giant will slap you. Bah! Oh, call him. Shemin Sem Moja. You understand? So, technically, you live in an environment where naturally the average height is 5 foot 10, 5 foot 9, 5 foot 8. This Akaka Bilsem of as for me, I want a guy who is of us. You, you, you see, you are giving parameters to a pool that does not have your description. The day you talk like that, take plane huh, and go to America. Where the height you are looking for is average height. And marry from there. Now, a cutter needs to do rougher. Then you ask why the Ghanaians want to marry Africans. Mm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, brother. I give you an advice today. Relinquish and say, Lord, whoever trusts in you, you order his steps. Now, why do you think God, do you think God is Pharaoh? God knows there's a preference you want, then he'll give you the opposite. Chances are that in the spirit, eh, you are in childishness with such a preference. You will grow in your marriage to realize that not knowing you didn't have an issue with dark or fair. It was, an, it was a complex in your heart that made you say, I like fair guys. You want half cast guys. So your babies will be curly hair. Spirit be a curly hair baby. And look at that. Jesus Christ. So let I pray, Lord, my husband, Lord, my cute, tall, fair, curly hair husband. Jesus will look at you and say, useless girl, you are not serious. Because of, even your prayer topic, there are only 10 in Ghana. There are only 10 of such guys in Ghana who are correct and spiritual who pray. Because you are adding everything, only 10 of them, to 7 billion. A bad thing. A bad thing. Sister, Tell the Lord, only me me here. <laughs> Tall, black, yellow. You'll be shocked that when you relinquish it, what you have wanted all along is what to show up. Wow. Stop being physically. Allow God. Oh, I'm preaching. Can I preach? Say I'm a restore of a breach. So anything that is becoming inconsistent, Jephthah. You're called Jephthah. And he says he was honorable more than his brothers. But he prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, I'm honorable, but I'm not blessed indeed. It means people call me blessed, but I know I'm not fully blessed. There are some things. There's some of you when the people see you, hey, Charlie Chema, Charlie, you are doing well, but in your heart, Wangan and Wakaukutokum. You see, your heart and your pocket is not matching. You look honorable. That's why some of you, because of that honorable appearance, you don't go to wedding. Yeah, because you will come in trotro, so the best way is not to validate your title. <laughs> so you will not show up again. Oh, I was somewhere, I was somewhere. It's not true. You didn't come with a car, that's why. We've all done some before. So usually you call a friend, Charlie, they go, you go drive, I'll join you. So you get there, you're just posing on your phone, nice kaftan, she nicky to me. <laughs> but today something will enter your heart. 
I said today something enter your spirit. You will be what you are indeed. Praise the Lord. Because we are going to repair the bridge. The bridge must be repaired. The bridge must be repaired. I believe God to marry. Make sure that by the time you are marrying, God is compensating you. And it's not you making sure. It means that you have put your spirit in a certain protocol. That by the time God gives you a money, all your friends will realize that it was worth your weight. That's why you shouldn't make rules when it's not time for rules. Because if you don't take care, you wait, 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 and you have to accept something like that. Because you feel you are waiting too long. So anything that comes, you're okay. Hmm? When the lizard comes in suit, you're like, ah, I know somebody. There's something. <laughs> You take it like that. But if you are waiting, then your spirit and your soul, your body must be postured in such a way that your weight is measured. It is paid like root. So that now you waited after widowhood and you waited in a proper posture. So by the time a man finds you, he's the richest of the town. Hallelujah. And it was not you were looking for it. You were focused on God's redemption. So I'll tell you something today. If you are focused on marrying the richest man, you might end up with the poor man who deceived you that he was rich. Hear wisdom. Hear wisdom. Because your eyes are, oh, I have a ship coming. Eh! Oh, I'm the one who bought the Lambo. Eh! You believe every lie. Because you are too desperate. Why did I go here? You are repairing the bridge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it is a brick in the law. It's a brick in the law. Now there's a, there's a breach that also occurred in the Bible. And number one, I'm going to start with one, one major point. Of course, this is not repairing the breach, but the first thing I didn't add the last time is ignorance. Ignorance, you should know, is the strength of the oppressor. I'll show you from the Bible. Look, Leviticus chapter 4. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 4. Verse 22. You see it in verse 13 also. Leviticus 4, 13. Leviticus 4, 22. Let's read together. I want to go. So he is acting out of ignorance of God's commandment. But Bible says, nevertheless, he is guilty. And his guilt, Bible says in the next verse, 23, the Bible says, or if his sin, when he has sinned, comes to the knowledge, he shall pay for it. So the fact that you did it ignorantly does not deny your guilt. You still violated the law. This is what we call prophetic message. This is the message that everybody should be here to hear. Yeah, this is the kind of message. It's not prophesying to you that, no, everybody should be here to hear this one. So you are ignorantly dating a married man. Yeah, oh, I'm coming to touch on some things. You ain't best show. Tell your neighbor their GIs what I've been on. Tell your neighbor, drink something. Prophet is coming somewhere. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, hey, le. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. No, I'm serious. Ignorance is no excuse. Actually, it is the strength of the oppressor. It's the strength of the oppressor. Why? Ephesians 6, the verse number 12, he says what? For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against, number one, and what? And rulers of what? So their rulership is in darkness. It's in ignorance. As long as you don't see, they can rule. As long as you don't know, they are ruling. They rule best in darkness. They rule best when the Christian is ignorantly in darkness. They are called rulers of the dark regions. And of course, if you read in Isaiah 60, it speaks about darkness, you know, with euphemism, saying that darkness is ignorance. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. So it's not physical that darkness covering the earth is ignorance and wickedness. But gross darkness it means higher level ignorance will cover people in the days to come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Yeah. What did Hosea 4 verse 6 say? Quote it for me. Someone should quote this for me. You should know it. 
Why my Bible readers? Yes, yes. Please don't push it up. Someone should quote it. Yes. I can't hear you. Uh huh. Lack of knowledge, my what? People perish. Now you can put it up. Now see what he says after he says. He said, now, now come now, my people, because thou hast rejected knowledge, and I'll also reject thee. Thou shalt be no what priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I'll forget also thy children. Now, when God forgets, it's, it's a kind of staying away in the day of trouble. It's not God like saying, I won't remember you, I've decided. No, no. He's in the day of trouble, God gives you distance. That's what Proverbs says. Proverbs chapter 1 says that wisdom has called for you in the streets many times, but that has not responded. So in the day you also call on wisdom, wisdom too will respond. <laughs> That's what he said. Are you together? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 says what? I'm going to say something that will help you today. Look, in all your getting, get understanding. Understand how the world works. Can I tell you something? If you see me saying things with ease or sharing revelations about things, about science, about uh, philosophy, about socialism and all that, I don't read every book. It's only the Holy Ghost I follow. And I follow the Lord. And based on that, he's able to show me how things work. All you have to pray for in life eh, is to understand how things work. That's what we call conceptual learning. If you are able to understand concepts, concept of economics, concept of law, concept of this, law is simply based on evidence. If you have no evidence, and evidence that is properly argued out. So the fact that you have evidence in law does not mean you win the case. You have to also know how to articulate and use your evidence appropriately. Because apparently, in certain countries in America, recorded evidence is not submissible. So if you don't understand this, oh, I have evidence, I recorded you. In some jurisdictions, that recording cannot be used as evidence. So your evidence provision is flawed. Concept. So it sticks with you. <laughs> hey, let's be together. Want to go? So the breach is a product that somebody is honorable, but they look famished. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, I've seen an arrow under the sun that kings are walking and beggars are riding horse. He said, this is a great folly. When there is a breach, there is a reversal of order. What it means is that your family was once the family that was called. Your family was once the family that was invoked or invited for important things in the land. All of a sudden, when the breach came, your family is now the servant. And another family that was not in position was now made king. It's a breach. Your honorable men are famished. And the multitude of them that followed you are dried up with test. Because of lack of knowledge, ignorance. So they kill ignorance. Can I tell you how to kill ignorance? The messages you've heard, they don't hear them once. No, I'm telling you, sin of angels, go and listen again. Law of the spirit of life. Soak that all the messages we've preached in the past, whatever we use for exercise and spirit, you should soak each message at least 10 times. So every month you can say this week I'm doing sin of angels. Every week. Because if you if you'll be shocked or if you'll be honest, when you listen again, realize you didn't hear something. You're like, ah, Professor, this one. And when was that? Yeah, you were there. That's how it is. That tells you that, and this this even the part that you 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 thought you heard, you didn't hear. How much more the path the Holy Ghost will emphasize to you Hallelujah. and say, focus on this one. This is your problem. It is in this paragraph. Hallelujah. Listen to it again. You see that you'll be able to change some things in your life. That's that means that your, your highest, most important capacity. Remember what he said in Isaiah 42? Remember what he said? Remember what he said here? Oh, do you remember? Isaiah 42. Yes. Thank you, sir. Ah. In hearing many things, you remember the scripture? In hearing many things, that's not what, listen, in seeing many things, that's not observe. So it's not in the multitude of information you hear. Can I even tell you something? I'll, I'll preach this message one day. You know, Psalm 23 says, I will lead you in the path of righteousness. Now in Israel, the path of righteousness, and he was talking about the Lord is my shepherd, right? Now he was using the literal way shepherds lead their sheep in Israel. So the path of righteousness is not a new path. Actually in Israel, the Mount Jerusalem is like a mountain. And when you stand there, you see something like a spiral road. 
that goes around Jerusalem. And you will see rings around the mountain that goes to the top. And the top is stigma, which means hope. So they go round, round, round. And the roundness of the path that is created is not created by men, sir. It's created by sheep. They've gone round about that path. Every morning the shepherd takes the sheep, the same path. So actually the path of righteousness, literally, in the new covenant means repeated teaching. You go to the same spot again. The same points will come back. The same, that is called the path of righteousness. You build it uh, till it becomes muscle memory. Your muscles twitch. When there's a situation, your muscle... You see, the, the only time you can say the word has blessed you is when your muscle can... Re- your, your mouth will react to a matter before your brain thought. A spontaneous reaction to a matter based on the words you heard. That's when the word has not entered you. But if you have to now think, hey, sorry, you, and the Bible said you are not there yet. You still need to feed. Yeah. That's the path of righteousness. One day we'll teach on it. We'll get to some day. I want to have to just do a whole teaching on Psalm 23. It will bless your life. So you are, you are seeing many things, but you're not observing anything. So please go back. Because ignorance is a dangerous, it's a dangerous legal grounds for the devil. Most of Satan's oppression in the lives of people is ignorance. He keeps you in the dark of many things. So you don't even realize Satan is the one operating now. Do you think if Peter knew that right after saying, uh, you are the Christ, son of the living God, Jesus said, ah, my, the, the flesh and blood has not revealed, the Lord has revealed. Do you think he would have spoken if he knew the devil was talking to him? He would have kept quiet. That means that most of the things we do, that is actually Satan, was because we're ignorant that Satan was the one talking. And most of the advice, oh, I'll show you something today. I'll show you something today. Something I want to show you today. And this, it will break all. Oh, not like I can say now. Okay, 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 okay. Do you know something? When God used the flood to kill the first batch of giants, now another batch of giants came to the earth. Now when that batch of giants came, God was using Israel, Abraham, to kill them. The Malachites, the Gergeshites, all those people were fighting, killing them, killing them. Do you know one day God chose fought a battle with the Amalekites in Exodus chapter 17. Go there. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 14. Moses made a pronouncement that God will not cease to fight the Amalekites. Let's read together. Uh-huh. He said, God said, I will utterly put out of the remembrance of Amalek from under the sun. Verse, verse 15. Look at this one. Look at this one. And Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord Abana. Next one. Next one. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that he will war with Amalek from generation. It means that the giants that were to be finished, God had put a program, offices, to kill them in every generation. Now hear this. Then God found some, handled the Amalekites, and he didn't handle them. He left Agag alive. But do you know the shocking thing about Agag being alive? Apparently, when he left Agag alive, he allowed some of the princes to run. Because the Bible calls Naaman, Haman, sorry, the son of Agag. Now hear this. I'm going to say something that will worry you, but it's to help you. Can I help you? Yeah. So in Esther, the Bible says Haman, he was the son of Hem, Hemadu, the son of who was an Agagite. So Agag was not finished. Some of his offspring ran. And put. So it means that, look at this. The seed of the giant it's a mutation between men and angels. Now, men will be judged by fire. Angels and Satan will be judged by water. So, Revelation 20, lake of fire. It will handle both entities. But giants. So, when God was killing, oh, when God was not killing the giants of the first age, he had to open the earth so that inert gases, such as nitrogen, sulfur, they mixed in the water to create a concoction of acid that will kill the first breed of giants. So the giants, you can't kill them by fire. Water will not handle them too. It has to be a mixture of a special concoction. And God has promised her, he will not destroy the earth with that concoction again. So look at this. That means that there is a race of beings who even Jesus' death 
Oh, uh, please. Oh, Lord, I hope I didn't say it too soon. These are the people. They can be redeemed because they are the seed of Agar. So Haman's descendants, they are still on the earth. These are the people when they appear, it's like they were born wicked. Nothing you say, like they can rule a nation and you don't know where the wickedness is coming from. Yeah, they are, they are, they are a strange breed. Bible calls them in 1 John 3. You see, Bible says, oh, 1 John 3.10. He says, I will go there, 1 John 3.10. Look at this. If this be the children of God are manifest, then the children of the devil. But we also know that these people called the children of the devil is not unbelievers. Unbelievers are called the children of the flesh. So there's a category of people called the children of Satan himself. Let me go further and help you. Jesus said, I will send you a sheep amongst wolves. Unbelievers are not wolves. They are goats. He will separate the sheep from the goats, not wolves. So wolves are in a different category. Hey! <laughs> now on the basis of this not every woman is in trouble was I polite enough was I polite yeah. no 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 there's someone you sleep with them <laughs> Oh, you don't know what you have done. Can I tell you something? The danger about women is that, eh, this one, Prof. Nana said it, so I can say it. He said that, and he was blessed, he was a blessed, and when he said it, he moved me. He said the dangers of women is that they are authors, but they don't know. You know why? You are the junction between the spirit and the natural. Every woman who has a womb incubates spirit in flesh. So you are portals to the realm of the spirit and the natural. So the, the, the most dangerous thing about women is that they don't even know their authors. You don't know what you're doubling with. Can I tell you something? Mm, this one there's all nice, so I can repeat it here. I can repeat. Government has listened to God said, no, share it here too. There are some women you don't sleep with them. You don't sleep a woman with a woman who is pregnant with another man's child. They don't do that. No, today you will repair it. Oh, you know it's serious. It is, oh, come on. Someone impregnated her. The baby is there. You go and sleep on it. <laughs> oh, assemble by baby. Can I preach my message? I told you that today you'll be very tense. Be bare feelings. Be bare feelings. Only you have feelings. Number two. Now hear this. In modern marriage and counseling, we say that when a man travels to a nation, two years, three years, or six months, eight months, then he comes back to the house, and the wife is in the season of administration. Based on a certain kind of consensus, something can happen. But not a girlfriend. No, no, she, you don't sleep with a woman in her menses. Ay, 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 ay. You, have, you have open realms. Now, what feelings are do you have? What? <laughs> For 20 days, you have done what you want to do. Only five days, six days, you can't wait. Abba. That's what I'm saying. There, there are exemptions. In the marriage counseling book, you, you have traveled two years, six months. You came and the thing is happening. God will help you. You'll find a way around it. But aside that, in Kanka, you are not married. <laughs> No, 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 seriously. Look, 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 look. Can I tell you something? The fastest way Satan is spreading his agenda on earth is sex. You don't know. It's the fastest way to intrude into your life. I don't, we went to Proverbs 9. Let's go there. My wife was even showing me something. We said, we're having a discussion now. Proverbs chapter 9, go there, verse 16. Look at what he said. <laughs> Can we together? I want to go. Uh -huh. So, the one the Bible says who wanted understanding means that this person lacks understanding. 
That's why the strange woman is able to tell him. So this statement, stolen water is sweet. Is the strange woman telling the man? The boy, when it is stolen, it's sweet. When you are not married, it's nicer. And bread that is eaten in secret. Is, and this is the strange woman talking. She said, to him that wanted or is lacking understanding, she says to him, stolen waters are sweet. Bread eaten in secret is nice. But eating, eating, but he knoweth not that the death and the dead are there. Kigagaba. Bruh, may the Lord put skeletons on your eyes. The next time you want to remove your belt, may the Lord put skeletons on your eyes. <laughs> I was speaking to somebody and the person was telling me something very interesting and the person was saying something he says she realized some days that she will have a dream and somebody is coming to force himself like a spirit I was trying to have sex with her all of a sudden this is a Christian very devout powerful Christian and the lady was like she didn't understand so she started asking God questions and God said it's not your fault your husband has done something. Yes. So when she asked, she finally realized the, father, the husband had passed certain areas and done certain things. So you have no idea. You are having sex with somebody outside. A spirit is gaining grounds. Why? You have opened portals that were one shot. And the spirit is now coming. So every time you sleep, a spirit is forcing to have sex with you. Somebody is in breach. Yeah! <laughs> Today, <laughs> when you see a fine girl, you say, Ah, hell, 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 hell is watching me. One time, hell is watching me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a serious matter. Ignorance is a serious thing. Now. Don't sleep with a married man, a married woman. You know the painful part? When you sleep with a married man, a married woman, and their husband or wife sleeps with them that night. They have activated covenant, and whoever is who in who, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. The way you are nervous is good. Don't sleep with a man of God. No, no, no. Serious. Listen, listen. No, no, no. Look. Forget your temptation. Man of God. No. Look. 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 Any man of God who is tempting you, warn him. You know why? Because God has invested. And the Bible says, Woe unto him by which this fall comes. I invested you. I invested in the in That one is not even the person's prayer. God will visit you. Now after everything I've done. So please, any pastor, if he's even falling or backsliding, tell him, Brah, backslide somewhere else. <laughs> Do the moonwalk reverse. Oh, yeah, farming chair. You know, you'll be doing moonwalk like this. You are going, you are going, you are passing. Let him, let him pass and watch. Bye bye. <laughs> it's not me that will die. <laughs> yeah, it's not me that will suffer judgment because of you. God will ask me in heaven. Go and ask Bathsheba. That's why Bathsheba gave her advice to Solomon. He said, My son, give not thy strength to women. She knows what she did to her husband. Do you know from the day Bathsheba entered David's life? Things stop working. David can't fight again. There's no major advance, even to the point where because of Bathsheba, he murdered somebody. God said, your hands are stained with blood. That blood was blood. You see, so it means every battle David fought was sanctioned by God. So God couldn't accuse him for that. The blood he said his hands were stained was his husband, Uriah's blood. Because that was not sanctioned by God. It was murder. So God was seeing him like how he saw Cain. There's blood on your hands. You can't build my temple. So because of that, there are things God denied David. But the covenant came true. From that day, rape in his house, murder in his house, his own children were killing each other. Bruh, 15 minutes of useless orgasm is not compared to a breach. May that word remain in your spirit. When somebody said you sin, remember, it is 15 minutes of useless orgasm. Your destiny will fly like a butterfly. <laughs> Listen to what it's not bass. Listen. <laughs> hmm. 
So if you see somebody who is dating and they are not yet married and they are always trying to get close, you tell them that, brah, how far with your beloved? Make sure the conversation, because you see, if you practice it before you marry, you will do it when you marry. If you don't care that somebody is dating, you can pass the back. You know, you, because I, I want to marry you. We are in covenant. That's why we are exclusive. Then you say, oh, Grants, you are not wearing ring. You are exposed to me. Hey, it tells me that the day we also wear ring, you will find another excuse why this ring is not enough. But you don't know you have dug a trench. So then we'll pray. Because some of you, if you don't take care, you stop your own destiny. That's why I tell a lot of the ladies, a guy tells you, I'm, be, be, I'm divorcing, I'm not done. Even already, cry, Bible cry, we have an issue with the divorce. The person has divorced, you want to marry, we are, we are still finding a way. And the person has not finished, he's in it. <laughs> and you are saying, oh, he said, you, you believe it. And he said, and by the time he is saying, he has already removed your dress. Oh. 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 Let me leave here. Some people are not liking the message. Obviously, I'm in him crying, my bad, sorry. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yeah. Are you sure you are here? Yeah. Are you what I'm talking about? Yeah. So ignorance attracts Satan. Because sometimes, for instance, like you see people talking anyhow to their parents. You are ignorant. You don't talk anyhow to your elders. Or a, a man of God who prays for you. No, you, you, you are ignorant. Things are shut over people. Oh. Oh. You can't help. Look, I was young, now I'm grown. Sometimes, you know, growing up in the law, you see a pastor, does he like me, does he not like me? One day God warned me, he said, if you ever think, he said, do you know what the man of God is going through? That was the last time I ever had any, like, does, am I better than, no, no, it was the last time. Don't go down that lane. You are invoking things. Sometimes we don't talk because, if we talk, you'll think we are protecting ourselves. It's not about us. You have sh- if you don't ask for repair, you said you are stuck. Things won't work. And it's not a case. That's why you don't force yourself to submit to anybody. God must lead you. And if God leads you, what it means is that the day Pastor Bafu comes and says, Prophet, God said you should father me. Any attitude towards me is an attitude towards God. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. The every one I talk in, I know to work in two weeks. Because you can see that they believe anything. When you don't even pick their cause, they understand that, sir, it's even a privilege that you... Re- Some people, when I text them, but thank you, daddy, for responding. Some people feel entitled that you must respond to everything I said. And they don't realize that it's the beginning of familiarity. <laughs> Some of you didn't know I traveled to Nigeria last week. I'm not lying. So you thought I was in Ghana. <laughs> And because sometimes my phone is on roaming because I have to talk to my family and all that. People can call me and go, I call Prophet Dean Peck. You don't know where I am. You don't know which country I'm in at the time. And I don't intend to inform you that next week I'll be in Nigeria. A lot of you won't come. You, you, only two people will be here. The elders and Dickens. Mm. That's what we are breaking. It's a culture the church has learned that if the head pastor is not around, then their church won't be sweet. It's like, last week was church not sweet. Hey. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. We leave the anointing here. Whatever God wants to do, he does. Anybody who takes the microphone, God is using them to speak to us. Period. Tell your neighbor, period. period. I want to hear the period. 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 Hallelujah. Period. Don't speak to me. It's okay. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yeah. Very, very important. Don't be ignorant about such things. Men of God, don't try. I mean, that's why I'm in my corner. Any man of God I follow, God told me 15, 20 years ago, so that I won't go and cure any rat. Because I don't know any, how anybody follows. So I take my time to follow. It will be beneficial for you if you take your time to submit. Don't rush. You don't understand. So if it is long overdue, fine, it's different. But you have to just follow God. Because I'm telling you, some of the things say, it's not just about prayer. Some of you will testify, since you submitted, you think well. Yeah, like things react differently to you. It's just cover. They don't need to pray for you. you just, you've entered atmosphere. Things will work a different way. Things will respond differently to you because you have, you have submitted. They don't play games with these things. Are we together? 
Don't be ignorant to mothers, fathers. Don't provoke them. Provo don't provoke a father. Why? They are gatekeepers. And your ignorance can invoke a curse. I don't care what your mother has done to you. I don't care what your father has done to you. Honor them. Do you understand? Yeah. We fear God. We honor men. Say after me. We fear God. We, fear God. we honor men. Yeah. The moment you swap it, of course, God also has honor. But the moment you swap it and start fearing men, you enter idolatry. Fear God. Honor men. What that means is I fear God so much that the men he has given me, I can't dishonor them. Because there are some things. One day my father in the Lord told me, the doctor told me something. He says, he was praying for somebody and God said, pray for him so that I can give him much. And this is a pastor. So he said, ah, God, why? He said, yes, if you don't pray, the much he's asking for, it will never come on his life. He said, you pray for him so that I, God, can give him much. So some of you are not getting much because you don't understand protocols. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. May the Lord deliver you. Jesus. The day you understand this thing, you will get it. You will see that ah, all your life, huh, you have not been faithful. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. So ignorance is out of the way. From today, you walk in revelation. Okay. You walk in revelation. You must understand. Following men of God, do it by revelation so you don't enter tradition. The moment there's no revelation in your action, tradition is inevitable. So go to it. Go and ask God. Find out, Lord, why must I submit? Why must I listen to counsel? Then God will explain things to you. There are things I can never talk to you directly. I will never answer to you except by a connection. It's not everything we see online, but I'm telling you, a lot of the things you see, there was an authority that could have handled that matter. Okay. All right. Repairing the bridge, number one. How to repair the bridge. Ephesians chapter 5, the verse number 14. It says, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 15. Do not be, uh, see that it works circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Why? 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 Redeeming the time because, now can you go to Passion Translation for verse 15? Passion Translation, quickly. Let's read together, I want to go. So it means that every day you wake up, you must make sure everything you do in that day is fulfilling purpose for your life. The time is short. Though. I just told you that. You see, when we are talking like this, it looks like, oh, prophet, uh, you faith has dried. Yes, you said it. Hey, powerful. I told you something after. You didn't hear the rest. I said, after the faith is dry, according to Revelation, an evil spirit, very strong, shall be released upon the earth. Do I tell you something? And can I say this? Revelation chapter 6, the four horsemen, the white, the black, the green, and the red horse. Those are shadows. Communism, Catholicism. The real horses have not been released though. Oh no. That's just shadows. You know, of course, it's like the, the order of the Antichrist. He said the spirit of the Antichrist is now working. So the Antichrist has not yet come, but his spirit has taken the lead. And it was in the days of John. So even the day of John, the spirit of Antichrist had preceded to the end <laughs> and was working. It was already at work in the children of darkness. So the spirit was already working. It's the same way with the horsemen. The, 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 the shadow of it, capitalism, communism, Islamism, and what? Capitalism. It's a shadow of it. And even capitalism as a black horse, we are close to it. It's a very soon, we'll say one ballet of green. It's, it, the price they mentioned there, in the days of John the Apostle, it was ridiculous. So that thing they said that very soon bread will sell at $12 in London. It's not a lie, you. Something's about to happen. I told you something's about to happen. In the reign of Prince Charles, you understand something? Oh, you understand. You just put it there, King Charles. King Charles. You understand something? Tale, tatolia, tabrata. Verse 16. What does verse 16 say? Quickly. Mm -hmm. Don't live foolishly for them that are... Huh? For then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will. So not living foolishly guarantees that you have understanding to live God's will. Next, 
18. But do not be drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, feel, be filled with what? The fullness. So how not to live foolishly? How to redeem the times from evil op operations of darkness is to be drunk with the spirit. So first and foremost, the way to repair the breach is from the position of absolute dependency on God. Can I say why? Because many times, the pathways of the spirit cannot be achieved by the orchestrations of the flesh. A lot of you want to redeem lost prayer time, and you do it in the flesh. So in repairing the breach, you, you, you destroy the breach better. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to fast last two weeks. So, oh, prophet, I went for your tapes again. If the Holy Ghost didn't order it, you are using your flesh. He died down. While I go to scare others. So you see, that, that fasting you are fasting, instead of you to be encountering God, flesh and lust is arising. You're like, but I'm fasting. Because it was a fast you call, not God. Of course, when we call a church fast, it is according to the operations of your obedience to it. Certain things and certain tendencies will not show up. But when you call your own fast, and it's based on the operations of the flesh, because it is the flesh that told you to fast, it is the same flesh that will bring you pictures. It's not the flesh that instructed you. So it's the same flesh that will come and give you ideas. It will make you insult. It will make you angry. You are fasting, but you're not talking to your husband. When you wake up in the middle of your soccer, you are deceiving us. God is not minding anything. You are wasting, you are on hunger strike. Amen. So it starts by total dependency on Say total dependency on God. Oh, say, I can't hear you. Say total dependency on God. Hallelujah. Why? Why is it necessary? Why is it necessary? Why is it necessary? Now, this breach, according to, you know, so 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the verse number 15. 2 Corinthians 3, 15 says, Holy Spirit. Huh? Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. The verse number 16. So that by, uh -huh, God confirmed the end of, an oath is for confirmation, the end of all strife. Next, 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show himself to the heirs of promise, the interview of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. 18. So that by two immutable things in which it is possible God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who have what? Fled to what? For refuge to lay hold on the hope that is said before us. Colon. Next. Which hope is an anchor? What? Both sure and end which entered into that within the veil. Notice this, 20. For, oh, I can't hear you, please. <laughs> now, when you read it, you, you realize that the veil here he's talking about is your flesh. So when the Bible says that unto this day when Moses is read, a veil covered their heart. Their flesh becomes the energy and auspices by which the law must be obeyed. Remember the law of good. Thou shalt not. Ah, I will do it. This year you must be prayerful. Ah, prophet, you have no idea. I vow to read my Bible. And they be seen there. Finish your Bible, Lord. <laughs> finish your Bible. Oh, tell your neighbor, finish, finish. your Bible. Some people have finished already. About three people have finished the Bible already. Yes. Others finished and they are reading three Bibles. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Finish your Bible. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Tell your neighbor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm quite sure it's in Hallelujah. Are we here? Yeah. So, the flesh speaks of the veil. The veil is the flesh. The veil is the flesh. The veil is the flesh. So he's saying, go back to Corinthians. Corinthians, all right? First Corinthians. Second Corinthians, yes. Are we there? Good. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Next, 16. 
Nevertheless, when it shall what? Turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20. Hebrews 10, verse 20. Has consecrated a new and a living way for us. Uh -huh. it's, it's, by a new and living way, which have, he has consecrated for us through the what? That is to say what? So he's saying that the moment you turn to the Lord, the flesh is taken away. That means that, can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Play a chord for me. Um, Doc, play a chord for me. Play a chord for me. Just play any chord. Um, a minor, major chord. Just a major chord for me. Just play. Just play. Can you give me volume? Everybody speak. just speak in the language of the Spirit. I'll show you something. Okay. Yeah. So as he's doing this, he's motioned by the Holy Ghost. Is everything fine? Are you doing okay? Life is fine. You look tough. I'm eating. It's nice. Uh, you are shy. Your cheeks are calm. It's good. Yes, and do a lot of exercise. Wonderful. Well, well, go back to the keyboard. Katosh Kebele Bebesh. Kebalaba. Try to remember what you were playing. Try and play the progression. Yes. Do you realize it has changed a little bit? Hold it. This is what we do anytime we preach the spirit. So you are praying, when you pause, go to your phone. You pause two weeks, you've not read your Bible. When you come back again, you are not playing the same chords. So what will help you? Your flesh will contaminate your process of recovery. Because you are trying to remember from the last point, that's what he's doing now. He's trying to remember from the last point what was prophet singing to get the chords right. So only the spirit can realign you to the lost chord. It's called the lost chord of the spirit. That's why a lot of you, eh, from SU days, you've not recovered to date. You know why? You are still using your flesh to redeem that lost time. You will struggle. Just kneel down and say, Lord, I intend to you. Wherever I drop the chord, start it again. It might not start like the chord you used to know, but along the line, you have been driven. Inganana somana nandoria. Open my eyes to see my Lord. Lift my hands to fight and fight and love. That's how you go. So by the time you realize he's weaving you again, and you are back on court. So where you left off seven years ago, the Holy Ghost can patch it up and lift seven years out of your history. And it will be as if you never lost the court. You are struggling to use your effort. I used to pray. I used to fast. If you use your effort, you will be missing the entrances. Allow him to find the God again. The lost God. That's why he said, if you shall turn to the Lord, if you rely on his assistance, I know nothing. Lord, delete how I know I have seen you. Isaiah said, and Job said, we have inquired of thee, and we have heard thee by the speaking of thy mouth. But now we see you. It changes the story. If you enter God, you realize that God, eh, he is not where you left him yesterday. You, if you are struggling, eh, use church. Miss church for one week. And don't be doing the same thing or have a good reason why you miss church. By next week, you realize that you are out of place. Everything seems high. Everything's so fast you can't catch up because you've been out of the synchrony of the spirit. But if there's a genuine reason why you couldn't come and you are online, you still be posturing, you still be following because there's a pattern that God has laid for you in the spirit. Don't waste years using your flesh to come to the same conclusion. That do wretched man I am. Some of you, some addiction should have stopped seven years ago. But you've been using your effort. This year I've prayed. I fasted seven hours. I made a resolution this year. I'll not do these things. And you still go back again. And you're like, Lord, why? You have to quench the effort. If it shall tend to the Lord, the flesh will be taken 
away. Then when the flesh is taken away, what does it say in verse 17? Verse 17, very important. How to repair the bridge. Very important. And this, oh, no, 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 no. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. It shall turn to the Lord. It says, nevertheless, when it shall turn, the, it said, never, it said, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there. this liberty is not joy per se. This liberty is, if you check scripture, is to do God. Because if you read 18, we all with unveiled faces, beholding us in a glass, we are transformed from one level of glory to the other. That means that as we, Bible said in a mirror, it means that we reflect the glory we are beholding. So the liberty is the liberty to freely do God without the inhibitions of the flesh. That's what it means. If you learn the spirit, eh, redemption of time will be your easiest ability. You just get into the spirit and can I tell some of you, the Holy Ghost, when he's redeeming time, will not send you to the schedule you used to once have before you lost time. Six months ago, you used to pray at 5 a.m. every morning. You've stopped for three months. Going back to five will be dry. When it's dry, it's the flesh. But you will not start with five. You say, boy, you've lost time. What do we do then? Redeem it by six o'clock prayers. So on your own, every day you close for work. Six to six testing daily. Then God will change the time to 12 noon. Then by the time you realize, 5 a.m. is natural again. When you wake up at five, your eyes are open. And it's easy. You know how to enter the spirit. If you hear me going to the forest, sometimes it's to redeem time. You should know the buttons to press to realign yourself when you've been too busy for God. Sometimes you have to go on a retreat. Six months, you've not been to a retreat. And you had weekends freely and you were folding your hands in your bed. Boy, tell somebody that since we come to church on Sunday, I'll go Friday night. I'll be there Saturday. Sunday afternoon, I'll leave. By the time you come, you'll be recalibrated. Some of you have begun to act in the flesh again. You are getting irritated. Last policy, if you did it for a month, you are becoming moved again. Go and retreat. Till that nonsense dies. And you have no capacity to resurrect it. I'm showing you how to redeem time. Because redeeming time means that you are buying back at a cost what was once yours. So there must be a cost implication when redemption is in view. So don't think you, oh, you stop praying. Bah, you are back at 5 o'clock. No, it's not like that. God might lead you in a certain path. Otherwise, if you don't take care, you'll get to 5 a.m. and the lost cord is not there. You'll be shocked. That same 5 o'clock you used to pray and see God. You'll be on YouTube. You'll be up 5 a.m. and you're on Instagram for two hours watching pictures of nonsense. I've dialed the number. Everybody's stiff because they know what I'm talking about. You wake up at 4, but you're on, you're on the phone watching nonsense. Repairs. We can't sleep like everybody sleeps. We can't throw our weekends like that. Me, I know I have a bridge to repair. It's not every wedding I'll show up. Me. <laughs> if I'm not married, I don't, I'm married already. So whoever I marry has to be somebody I'm wedding together. Aside that, don't expect me to show no like I'm doing nothing. Mm, 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 mm. I, I have to find a wedding to go to. Oh, then you're not a bridge repair. Last Saturday you were free. Look for somewhere when you down. Sakutaya tapata yoskapa. Feli atapasaba. And do this because you see, when there's a bridge repair, you either dreamt about the problem that's about to enter your house. But the painful part is that you feel the burden that your brother is your duty. You feel that mommy is my problem. And it's on you. Because you are the bridge repairer. So nobody feels it like you feel it. Because you are the bridge repairer. Share the link. Share the link. It's not for fun. Some people came to Ephesus last week. Two weeks ago, and they said they've never been to church before. It's somebody's link they shared. I get sad when I go and people start, I don't see you sharing the link, inviting anybody to this sin. Practice what will make you a signpost. So in the day you want to sin, the people who you showed the way will tell you, are you not the one who has been preaching to us to make you stay? 
All these people you see here, they can't fool anyway. Because as soon as they stand on this pulpit, I know you. When a bank recently asked him, and a teller pointed to me, Prophet said, I don't know the lady from Jack Robinson. Then by the time you realize, the people helping us open church accounts, they were saying, Prophet said, Prophet said, Do you know what they told us? They said, Anytime you are around, pass through. <laughs> I said to do what? He said, just pass through. The blessings on you, just pass through. So by this frequency, sir, why can't you misbehave? You'll be walking somewhere and somebody just smile at you. Hello, sir. You're like, hello, sir. And he said, I know you. Eh, powerful. You'll be somewhere and somebody will listen you down at the airport. Somebody is shooting the gun and they are mass. Hello, prophet. Tell them, I've been watching your services. <laughs> And I was in Nigeria recently, I was in a hotel, and a lady from her church, powerful church in Nigeria, came, powerful singer, came to come and see me. And when they got there, the, 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 the man at the lobby says, Prophet, do you enjoy your stay? And everybody was speaking at my face. Then I met Pastor Jude, pastor of Present House, he would come to pick me for you know, a lunch. So when I saw him, we were in the lobby of the hotel, people were sitting there, and the Agbada and Babariga, and all the Babariga is five, five hundred dollars. They were sitting there. He said, man of God, I nearly said, take it easy, sir. <laughs> hey, be hey, the shock all of us. What has the prof seen? <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ. You can't hide again. You can't hide again. And you're not hiding in safety. Sometimes they must know you're a priest so they don't bring temptation away. Sometimes they must know you're a priest and say, since you became spiritual, we can't invite you. Do you know the parties people tell me, oh, daddy, I'm doing party, but you can't come. I said, why? He said, I wear turns. It started from campus. I said, oh, why do you put this old prof? You know, nowadays, we'll feel judged. I said, you judge, who will judge you? He said, I want to feel free and dance. That tells you that if me, a mere mortal, you are uncomfortable around me, then the Messiah. Please, oh, you are not part-time Christian. You can't be fighting a full-time devil and be a part-time Christian. Some of you are sleeping. Well, I told you last time when we were praying, unreasonable men, they have fasted and prayed that you will not do well. Some people have sworn that since you said you will not be part of the clique, they will ensure you suffer. Don't joke with it and be sleeping away. Because if they loved you, they will be happy that you have found God. So what is your problem that now you are following God and you are not doing what they do? They want to destroy you. Jesus Christ. That's my tablet. That's rapture. <laughs> Somebody here. In most of the 9 verse 11 to 13, speaking about the bridge that's to be repaired by the tabernacle of David, he said, I will restore that bridge. And in the days, that bridge is talking about, look at this, I'll raise up again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen and closed up the breaches thereof. What is this bridge? This bridge was as a result of Uzzah. In 1 Chronicles chapter 13. Uzzah, the Bible says, 1 Chronicles 13, I think verse 12, is it there? Yes, it's there. 1 Chronicles 13, uh, yeah, go to verse 9. Go to verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. Now he says, and when they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, the Bible says, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, and the ox, for the oxen stumbled. Verse 10, and the Lord's anger was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark, and he died before the Lord. Verse 11, and David was displeased because the Lord God made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore the place is called Perez Uzzah until this day. You know why? Uzzah was the nephew of Abinadab. That was his uncle. And Abinadab was the high priest. So the ark was in his house to be restored to, the, to Jerusalem. So Uzzah has seen the ark many times. He thought it was a normal furniture. Familiarity. So it is falling out. Let me support it. God dealt with him. You know why? The name Uzzah means man's strength. The strength of man. It looks like Boaz. Boaz is in him his strength. But Uzzah is man's own strength. Both of them mean strength. But Uzzah is man's strength. Boaz is God's strength. 
So anytime you are not relying on God and using your strength, you are breaching the laws of the Spirit. This is Peter's problem in Luke 22 verse 31. He was using the flesh to do a spiritual job. Lord, I will not let you die. And the Bible says, Satan has asked of you legally. Go to the passion. Satan has legally asked of you that he what? Sift you, uh -huh, asked of to have you. That he may what? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Satan has demanded to come to you and sift you like wheat and test your faith. And Jesus didn't stop Satan's action. Why? Peter entered the energy of his flesh. Anytime you rely on yourself to do God, you'll be struck. Oh, now I'll be serious with church. You have imposed a sanction of failure. You will fail. This year, I'll read my Bible well. You are going to fail. Because you have activated the voice of Satan to come and eat this flesh. I told you two years ago that the spirits are waiting. Looking for which flesh they can eat. The demons are starving. They are looking for dust because the dust is to be the food of the serpent. You will crawl on the dust and you will eat the dust. Remember, he has just cursed Adam. And to dust thou shalt return. And he said, that dust you will return to is what Satan will eat as his food. So the serpent will crawl on his belly and eat the dust of the earth. In the same regard, Bol Oscar Diva. Can I show you a very interesting statement? So when man was walking the earth, dust gathered on his leg. And that's what attracts Satan to buy the heel. But the solution is wash it. By the washing of water, which is the word, then you stop Satan from feasting. There goes the prince of this world. Nothing of his. What is everything of his? Look, can I tell you? I didn't say it in, in your... Yesterday we were watching a movie, right? A certain movie by Will Smith. And when we're watching the movie, me, when I watch a movie or I chance on it, I usually watch movies when I'm eating. Or me and my wife are doing movie nights. But in general... Hey, it's okay, it's okay. Ah, go and do some. Someone said, I can't wait to do movie night. Marriage is not all about movie night. <laughs> now hear this. So we're watching this movie. Then, apparently was this a um, Betton, he was a con artist. I think Focus. Yes, that movie. So he was betting somebody $2 million and said, everything he has, you bet it. And told his girlfriend that she should choose any number. Then the girl was looking in the telescope and saw one of their colleagues in the number. Then she realized that, no. Then that's the number. So she mentioned them. They, they didn't know the plan. But it was better. Then when they went into the car, he was saying, how did you not choose that number? And why did you know he would choose that number? He says, the man, when he left his hotel, he was seeing the number 55. Everywhere he was passing, he saw protesters and we made them carry the number 55. When he entered the stadium, everywhere he was passing, number 5, number 5. They even played a song in his lobby in Chinese. That speech of the number 55. So subconsciously, he has already chosen the number without realizing. When I was watching, God said, that's what Satan does to you. In seeing and hearing, you've been subconsciously chosen to choose immorality, and you don't realize it. So the day is presented, you've been wired a long time ago to choose this one. That's why you don't go to every party. Because the music you are hearing, subconsciously has wired last, and you don't realize it. The day is presented, you don't know why you are doing it. It's the same way when you subconsciously listen to revelations, you listen to teachings, you are watching prophetic ministrations. Subconsciously, the day you take microphone, you will pick a name. And it's from a preacher you heard. Somebody was prophesying and, heard, heard, and called the name Jennifer. So as you pick the mic, a name drops in your spirit, Jennifer. And you're like, how did I know the name? There's a lady here called Jennifer. And everything you describe is a subconscious programming before the prophetic took over. I'm telling you. If like come to church and watch anything, you realize you can't listen to anything I'm saying. But listen to a message I preached last week. Even if you do it for three hours, when you get here, your spirit is open. You are writing with ease because you are already in the message before it started. That's how it works. So you are always programmed for the error you commit. So don't joke with these women naked on billboards, 
bikini everywhere, smartphone and ladies in bikini, anybody showing their body is programming men. So the day will come, men are not satisfied with their wives. Because you've been programmed with different sizes and shapes. Ah. Ignorance. Eh? So I don't joke when you enter a car, this 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 sir, change the station. Anytime I enter Nigeria, I tell my drivers, do you have any gospel station here? I said, no, sir. I said, okay. I think they have a law that no one can own it because it's a varied society. So he said, do you have your phone? I said, yes. Play from Bluetooth. You must control your environment. The Uber, is it free, right? No, no, no. no, no. Didn't you pay? So you also paid for the radio. So it's two things. If you have a problem that shut it down, and if you shut it down, I'll disturb your ears. Rakota Katabas. radio, Put on the radio. Either the radio or my tongues. A ZBDB tire. If he's disobeying and feel like he should play, put at his ears. A soap of Whisper into his ears till he's irritated. I'm paying for my right. The same way you ask for AC, tell him to change the station. So you can control the environment. Satan sort of sift him. So the flesh is energized by what you are seeing and hearing. That's why I keep telling you something. First Corinthians 14 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. A bridge because of Uza. As he relied on his strength. Can't we together want to go? Can we read it from Passion Translation? Let's see what Passion said. Let's read. Now hold it. That means that when you are going to work, I, I've said it before and I'll say it here. I said it to a class in a Nigeria prophetic class. I'll say it here. Anytime they diagnose you with a problem, strangely enough, it's as if the TV had it. As long as you put on the TV, telliness didn't find any subject on that day but the thing you just heard you have and start describing it to you. That means that even Satan understands the power of voice. You plan that you want to be rich. The next morning you put on the radio, the economy is bad, the city is depreciation, and you think you are just hearing news, but you are being programmed to accept that the economy is bad. I told you today, break limitations. Decide not to live on Ghana salary. Decide not to live on the economy of Ghana. Your economy is from above. Your citizenship is from above. Your rulership is from above. Forget what the dollar is going to. Your rulership is from where? Above. And start speaking in the name of Jesus. I have $10,000. I have $100,000. You speak like that. It will find you. Eesh. Hallelujah. Oh, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? All right, all right, all right. Next one, next one, next one. Let me just go through them quickly. I told you I'm just doing this repair of the bridge. So I'm showing the things to use to repair the bridge. Number one, go into the spirit. Because you see, in the spirit, eh, also, you are able to decode what exactly went wrong. Your problem is not that God can't tell you. Your problem is that you've not decoded. Ken Hagen said one day, eh, he was praying. When the service to the doctor was sharing this thing. He was praying God told him something. He says, ah, he had confessed. He said he started having a medical condition. Right, my dear? He had a medical condition. He couldn't sleep for three days. And apparently, Kenneth Hagen said, he's like me, or I'm like him. When we fall to the bed, we sleep. No, it's a serious condition. You know, in March, we went for CCF family something conference. A young man came to the front, and he said, he sent me a testimony. I've, I've been busy, so I've not shared the shift. Very powerful shift testimonies that have come. If you have any testimony, please send it. Shift testimony that happened. Just send it to us. I'm going to post them this week. Now, so this gentleman said, I pray for him in March. He said he hardly sleeps. Every day he sleeps around two or three. He can't sleep. Someone said, I wish I had that. Because some people, they can sleep with impunity and impetus and panache. Because when they sleep, they are sliding in the spirit. The more the hours, the more they go deeper. <laughs> Those people can fire 10 hours sleep at your age. Then when they wake up, they say, oh, their brain needs 10 hours. You are not a child. <laughs> it's true, though. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, of course, between six to eight hours for your age, it's perfect for your, for your brain. Now, so he said when I prayed for him, since that day, he's testifying now because he has been testing it. He said since that day, he sleeps. Like, he said he can sleep to the point where when his roommates make noise and he wakes up, he just wakes up, look at them and go back to sleep. He said God has healed him permanently. So can I again say that he was struggling to sleep for three days? I said it's not usual of him. He will confess, he will pray. Ah, he's still not sleeping this morning. He prophesied, nothing was changing. He said, ah. He said, Lord, why? You know, that, you know what I'm just trying to tell you? It means if he continued three days with all he knows and does not use the enterprise of the spirit, he will go one week without sleeping. Your problem is not that God is not ready to hear you. For two years, you've not asked why you are where you are. So as long as, that's why I love what Bishop Oedipo said. It is those who ask questions that get answers. If you don't ask God, why is this thing not working? You will still be at the same spot doing trial and error. But he said, as soon as he asked God, God said, ah, we were discussing a servant of mine. And you joined the discussion. I said, what do you mean? So they said, they said yes. And, I, and you answered that, of course, anyone with common sense should have done better. He said, that's what can I again say? He said, the Lord said, that thing you said is the reason why there's a breach in the spirit against you. Look, the Bible says, who is he that judges another man's servant? Go and read it in context. The man had failed. Even the failure of a man of God, God says, he's my servant. You have no right. And you're not fair. Some of you, you exercise yourself in useless things. That's why your life is also becoming useless. Don't, it's higher than you. You, your own life, you are dealing with addictions. You can judge another man. <laughs> Step away. It's not your business. Are we together? He said, as soon as he asked for forgiveness, as soon as he was dancing, Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. Please take it off me. He said, yeah. He fell down. Back to sleep. So some of your problems is a breach. I told you, it's a breach. It's a breach. Are we here? Are we together? All right. So no voice you are hearing is by mistake. It's intended for something. You want to get promotion. As soon as you get to the office, Charlie, this company is hard to get promoted. Strangely. Ah, I want to transfer from this place. Ah, it's not easy. Oh. This, like Charlie, I want to, it's as if the very thing you want to deal with. Someone brings an exact story. And the, excuse me to say, our silliness is that because we think it came coincidentally to what we're thinking. We think it's God talking to us. But God does not speak failure. So don't say, oh, the way we were planning this thing, all of a sudden we went to office, somebody was discussing, it means God was trying to tell you something. God was not telling you anything. It's the devil using a voice. You better wise up and realize the devil is using a voice to talk you out of your, your breakthrough. I breakthrough in life. I can't fail in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fail. Hallelujah. I'm God's investment. I said I'm God's investment. God loves me. This is what you should say every morning. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, thank you for loving me. You have no idea the energy you get to do good. When you know God loves you. There's those who feel God doesn't care again. That's why they'll be like, after all. God, now nah, he's done with me. That's why you will fool. But when you know God still loves you, you'll be hurt that you are hurting me. It's an assurance in that love. Amen. Point number two, quickly. Forgive and forget. Forgive yourself, forget your past. Remember when we were speaking about legalities, we spoke about guilt and what? Condemnation. That guilt and condemnation is one of the strongest authorities of Satan's operation in your life. Guilt and condemnation. Do you know why? John said, John 14, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, not the Christian of sin. Listen to what I just said. The spirit of truth convicts the world of sin, not the Christian of sin. Please hear me very well. The Holy Ghost preempts the sin and comforts you after sin. Any voice that condemns you after sin is not the voice of the Lord. Please understand God's voice. That's why John said, everyone who is my sheep hears my voice. 
Then he came to say, beyond hearing, my sheep know my voice. There is a knowing and a hearing. In the same John 15. Sorry, John chapter 10, sorry. Yes. When I was speaking about the good shepherd. So there's a hearing of the voice and the knowing of the voice. Please, are we here? Can we together one? Did you reprove the Christian of sin? Because the Christian does not sin a sin out of ignorance. The Christian sins a sin out of choice. I know it is wrong, but I've decided I cannot help myself. So what you know already, what is he come to reprove you of? He is reproving the world because they don't even realize it's wrong. Please, don't be religious. I don't know. It's in the Bible. You are still struggling. Passion translation. It's like, it, did he say Christian of sin? Because somebody in his mind is all like, so when I sin, what do I hear? It's the devil. The devil says you have sinned. God will not talk to you again. Which, which scripture is founded on that? And the next time you hear any voice, tell it to prove by the scripture. God gave you an opportunity to test the spirit. Tell me by two or three witnesses. Show me. Where God will hear me. Because last week, last two weeks we learned in the gift. Even God gives gifts to the rebellious. So where is it God won't hear me? Even the rebellious, God gives gifts. Matthew 5, 45. He causes you to render on the just. So tell me where. God will say, because I've sent human being. It's a devil. And that's why I told you from today. Break that limitation. Quite a lot of you, and you have been stuck at a place where the last sin I did, God will never do any. So you are, that limitation is the reason why you're not in God serious. And it's the, it's the same thing that's stopping you from um, availing yourself to the Lord. But from tonight, avail yourself. I say, avail yourself. Uh huh. You come and what? That the world is wrong. About God's righteousness, so he has nothing to do about the church. He didn't say the Christian is wrong. He said the world is wrong about God's righteousness. Now hear this. Very important. Say forgive yourself. Forget the past. Now this is one of the strongest albatrosses that prevents people from repairing the breach. We give up. Philippians 3.13. Paul was a breach repairer. He was repairing the breach. Roman citizen... Jewish birth, law, and zeal, baptism of the Holy Ghost. See what he says. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the what? Things, those things which are behind. Let's read Passion. He said, I have one confirming, one burning focus, compelling focus. Look at this. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all about the past. Some of you have not forgotten your past. That's why you don't think you have a good future. Who slept with you? Who you slept with? Which baby you killed? Which baby you didn't kill? Oh, yes. So because of that, you, can, you are not focusing on the future. You are, you are still stuck. You are like, oh, that guy, if he only married me, forget the past. Hear me now, forget the past. Forgive yourself and forget the past. That means that if he says one thing I do, it means every morning you wake up, you must decide to forget yesterday. Some of you are carrying useless beddings of yesternight. Like how somebody does not like you who your best friend used to be seven years ago, they are not there again. And you are feeling some way and you are still carrying it into your future. You are not going nowhere. Break loose. That's what Paul said. Paul said, if I follow the past, then I will. even Paul, he still had a problem with his past. He says, concerning my position, I'm supposed to be chief among the apostles. But because I persecuted the church, I'm least. In 1 Corinthians 15, 8 and 9, he said he wants to be the chief among apostles, but... He persecuted the church. Show it for me, okay? So that these things I'm saying, they don't think I'm lying. Forget the past. Forget the past. Uh huh, uh huh. Next, verse 9. For I am the least. That is not me that I'm called apostle. So it means it's not that I'm not fit to be called apostle, but just because I did something to the church, that's why I'm even taking the position of least apostle. That's why Paul said every time he woke up, you know what Paul did? He is preaching to people he killed their parents. Paul killed Stephen. 
Don't you think Stephen's relatives were in the church? And they are the same people. And that's how God is. If you don't learn to forget your past, there will be a problem working for God. God sent Moses to his past. Go back to Egypt, where you are wanted in the defense system. Because he didn't just kill an Egyptian. He killed an Egyptian official that was, was watching over one of the servants. An officer soldier. He killed him. So he's wanted in the military ranks. And God said, go to that same place they want you. If you don't forget the past, you won't show up. So if you want pre- you want the God to send you somewhere. You'll be preaching in the bank. Then your ex be. Mm. <laughs> hey. Hey. Because what Kai? <laughs> what Kai? Oh, what Kai? Somebody would do here like, mm. Mm. That's why you don't know whether to preach or. That's why some of you up to now, eh, you have a problem putting up godly status. Your past. You are afraid somebody will send you a text that, hey, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? Is it, uh, do you need something from the Lord or <laughs> it's a permanent decision you have taken? Yeah. Forgetting the past. Forget the past. Because the past is taking you nowhere. If it was good enough, look, it's like, <laughs> I was telling my wife recently, I, I saw a, a, a statement somewhere. Someone made a statement. It's not wisdom, but there's some sense in it. He said, there's a reason somebody's called your ex. Many people try to go back to their past. And they don't realize that the same reason you left your ex is the same reason you leave him in the future. Think about it. There's a reason the person is called an ex. Mm. Somebody is holding on to a lie, Momo, brother. You are still holding on. <laughs> that prophet, you don't understand. That guy, ah, that guy. Oh, 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 Lord have mercy. <laughs> forget the past. Brother, forget the past. If you are struggling, I pray to God that, Lord, let me forget the past. Delete the memory of yesterday. Because there's too much in tomorrow for you to be staying yesterday. Forget the past. I'm sure you have to repair the breach. If you don't forget the past, because if you check all the breach repairs, they have to forget the, the error they committed so they can progress to the future. The moment God says, I've made you a standard in your family. Forget which uncles stole the glory of your house. Forget the past and move towards the... Otherwise, every day you see that uncle, that uncle, you begin to feel some way. Like, hey, is he, is he gaining grounds again? And do you know the funny thing? Because you have the thought that your uncle is evil, he will appear in your dreams as such. Oh, you check it. Your dreams, that's why God even said, there's a way to dissect dreams. There's an anatomy of dreams. I'm serious. You hate somebody or get some, something wrong with somebody, you will never dream well about the person. Let somebody offend you. Your dream about the person, will, the person will always appear in your dreams negatively. You either snatching something from your hand, they were stealing, because of your emotions you have right now, it will twist how the person... The way you, some of you see me, I'm delivering your dreams. It's not nobody who sees me like that though. Some people don't like me and are offended with me. They see me differently when I appear in their dream. I'm telling you, you let your some of you follow emotion, chemical reactions. Everything is emotions. They don't marry because of emotions. No, let me say what this one. Let me quote Prophet. Prophet Nana said something. I was there this, this Friday night. Let me quote what he said. And it's very true. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife. He didn't say boyfriend, love your girlfriend. So as long as you are boyfriend and girlfriend, you have emotional attachment. You have human feeling. You have not yet entered love. Or you don't know agape. You will know that you are not there yet. That's why God said it can only be carried out in the remit of covenant. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. It means that it is at that place you can die for your woman. I'm not also saying that don't love anybody and tell the lady that I don't love you. You are not in love. Don't be silly, eh? <laughs> of course, there's a kind of love you have, filio, yeah, brotherly kindness. There's a kind of love there is filio. It's not agape. Agape only comes when you zoom, when you enter the spirit. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Oh, are you here? Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. You're sure, you're sure. Hallelujah. Give God a clap praise. So 
So tell your neighbor, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. In, Revel in Romans chapter 3, verse 25, Jesus died for the sins which are past, for the remissions of sins which are past. And the word remission of sins which are past means that God actually did something. In the Greek, Jesus became, took ownership of your sins. So it means that when he says Jesus died for the sins which are past, it means Jesus took ownership for those sins. It means all the sins Adam did, all the sins that the pre Adamite did, Jesus took ownership as if he did it. And in the, in, the, in the Greek, you know, Ephesians 1, 7, you know, it says that, verse 6 says that, wherefore he has made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7 says that, uh, wherefore we have what? Received redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now the word for is Ephesus. Ephesus. Ephesus actually speaks of the remission, the taking away. So this, your forgiveness, is not like when God enters um, your record, there's a record there. He said, who shall lay any charge? That means that even the charges are not forgiven. They are cleared. That's why I say he shall in no wise clear the guilty. There is a clearance. Clearance means that today, when God sees you, there is no record of your yesterday crime. That's why I keep using the analogy of Moses Abraham. That after all Abraham's doubt, there was no record of his doubt. Rather, he staggered not at the promises of God. God didn't recognize his doubt. So, what is your business remembering what God has forgotten? Actually, the language is pride. Anytime you are trying to remember what God has forgotten, you are proud. And you are proud like, oh God, why can't, I, I don't feel forgiven. You are proud. It's a level of pride. Actually, a, a, a production from darkness. How do I know this? Look, look at this. He said, the moment you don't accept that you're forgiven and allow God to cause you to forget the past. See what he says, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Very interesting scripture, 2 Peter 1, 7. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, uh -huh, 8. Uh, for if these things be in you, look at this, and abound, they make that you neither shall be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See what verse 9 says. But he that lacketh these things, lack of forbearance, all those things, is blind and cannot see afar off. Why? Because he has forgotten. So the moment you struggle that God has forgiven you, you can't add to patience, diligence. You can't add to diligence, long suffering. So the protocols of increasing in making your election sure is because you've forgotten that you have been forgiven. So lack of forgiveness and forgiving yourself is the reason you are not being productive. He said he loves much because she's forgiving much. Your ability to love God is the revelation that he has really forgiven you. See what he said? I, when I saw I was, I was scared. I was like, wow. See what? Do you have Amplified or any other version? He said, look at this. Uh-huh. He said, for whoever lacks these qualities is blind, short-sighted, closing his spiritual eyes to the truth, having become oblivious of the fact that he is cleansed. So the moment you become oblivious as if God didn't die for you, the cross didn't really start you on a new page, you will not be productive in producing the virtues of the Spirit. So a lot of you are struggling to produce virtuousness, holiness, the power of the Holy Ghost. You are not coming to the altar of prayer because you have become oblivious to the fact that your sins have been cleansed. Say, I'm forgiven. Say, by his blood, I'm forgiven. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1, we are justified. Is somebody here tonight? Are you sure you're here? Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Say, I'm, for, I'm forgiven. You know how I know this? Look at, uh, uh, look at Jonah chapter 2, the verse number 6. Jonah was now captured in the belly of the whale. And he began to pray a prayer. So all this time, look, go, go to verse 3, when, when he was captured in the belly of the whale. Aha, aha, aha. All right. He said, for thou has cast me into the deep. He was now praying, and all the billows and the rivers have passed over me. Verse 4, verse 4. 
Then he said, I'm cast out of thy sight, yet I'll look again toward the holy temple. Verse 5. Then he said, What else I have compassed? Then Jonah was just praying. Then verse 8. What does he say in verse 8? See what verse 8 says. But they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Next. But I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I vowed unto the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. What he was trying to say was this. God wants to be merciful to me. But I keep observing my failure. So I forsake the mercy. Can I tell you something? When you pray, when you fast, when you give, and you've done everything you have to do and it's not working, and you're not getting answer, kneel down and say, Lord, have mercy. Because it means something has been breached. You need mercy to come up. You need mercy. He said, by his mercies, we are not consumed. You need mercy to recover. You see, I've dressed black and white like a lawyer today because I'm talking about legalities. Hallelujah. You're not catching the revelation. Should have known. I've never done black and white before. Have I done that before? It's my first time. Yeah, because I need to come as a lawyer. Hallelujah. So, but I will sacrifice. So, until, then see what he said, verse 10. Then the Lord speak unto the fish. So, after he realized that, he has to confess and say, Lord, I've observed lying vanities for a long time. That you are you're unable. That's why I love that song. He says that you're unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see you are very wrong when you think that God can help you. What have you done now? God can help you. Who have you killed that God can help you? God has used murderers. God has used prostitutes. I will be Amanda. Somebody receives salary for it. The Bible says a woman called Mary Magdalene, from whom the service, do you know why she was called Mary? The Bible said there were seven spirits in her. It was not normal for strange men to sleep with a, a woman. She needed spirits to assist her in a job. And they'll put that message. There are some jobs you need spirits to assist you. Mary Magdalene, from whom seven spirits were casted out. She was the first that saw Jesus resurrect. Who told you God can use you? I used to think that you listen to these old stories and the moment I did it, a dove left me. It is the, it's the doctrine of religion. I'm saying, religious spirit, eh, it will silence you in condemnation, you'll be shocked. And don't joke with that spirit. It's a very strong spirit. A lot of you are dealing with it, but you don't realize. That thing that makes you do, and you can't come to God, hmm, you, this Sunday you can't come to church because you went somewhere you shouldn't have gone to. A lying spirit is creating lying vanities. I said, the moment he prayed this prayer, the Lord spoke to the fish. So today I command somebody somewhere hearing me. Stop observing lying vanities. So God can speak to the problem for you to be vomited out. Yes, you deserved it, but somebody took the payment of what you deserved. Somebody has taken the payment for it. I said, somebody has taken the payment for it. Hallelujah. You see it in, of course, Psalm 69, you see, Psalm 69, you see the Verse 4, he says that Jesus restores unto us what he did not take away. So somebody has, has taken the, the trouble for you. Oh, I restored what I took not away. So Jesus becomes the offender, the one who, the one who pays what he did not take away. So it's the devil who took it away, but Jesus will appear and pay you compensation. I see he's the one who took it away from you. That's what he said. That's what verse 9 says. Look at verse 9. He said, you pay as if it is him. For the zeal of thy house has eaten and the reproaches of the reproached have fallen on me. So he will collect all your sins, your insults, your failures has fallen on Jesus. And he's the one who will pay you for what he did not take away. So today, be excited. Yesterday you fell. Let it go. Even today before you came to church, you fell. Let it go. Now these last two points are very necessary for now, some people are watching online. They wanted to understand how to redeem guilt and the violation of protocols, fear, all these things. Now, hear what I'm coming to say now. The next point, your words. Your words is the most and singular of Jade Varadas. I told some people somewhere that if I tell calf, that calf, I like you. You are looking good. You are looking nice. I like the way you are, you are looking very nice. Keep one more in this. You want to happen to him? By these words I've spoken, he'll be happy. I didn't give him anything. I just spoke. Why? He's made up of words. So what will make him excited is words. 
What will make him live is words. What makes his existence is words. In the same regard, I can use words to mess his day up. A lot of you here, when you wake up, one wrong word, your day is off. I, thank you, sir. You have, of, you have not emphasized the power of words. So there's two things you have to do. You should know who speaks into your life. You should know who you give your ear to. Some of you give your ear to a lot of people you have no people. And you know the painful part? You don't do it in discernment. If you did, you understand that Ahitophel is the uncle of Bathsheba. Oh. So all the things he's doing for David, there's background story. Joab is David's general because they have killed his brother. So he's using David's army for personal revenge. Oh, so if you don't take care, some people around you, they are good, they are happy, but they have history, they have connections. So Ahitophel, that's why when Absalom showed up, he moved. He said, now we can hurt this man. So he came to become David's assistant counselor because you messed my, my, my in-laws, my, ne my niece's wedding. I know what I'll do. You accept everybody in your life. Every man of God, every human being working, your boss in the office, anybody can talk to you and it's a big deal. You should know who you listen to. I don't give my ears to anybody. So he said, you, there's a way you, there's, he said, take heed how you hear. Take heed what you hear. So there's the what. Luke 8 said it and Mark 4 said it. There's the what and the how. Watch it. Not everybody will talk. There are some when they are talking, I block my ears. So I'm hearing you, but I'm not hearing you. You should practice that capacity. Oh, you are talking, man. I remember one man told me one time when I was working in government, he said, oh, go and take a loan. It's a non-tax loan, blah, 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 and buy a car. When he says, yes, sir. I didn't argue. I said, yes, please. As soon as I left, I smiled. Another man came to me, who was a, 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 an accountant at the time, came to me and said, like, oh, um, I heard you want to quit and go and start ministry. You see, I'm also a pastor. I'm in my 50s. I'm about to retire. When I retire, I have full time for the ministry. As he was talking, I knew that was not the counsel of God. And you know the shocking part? Child of God with the Holy Ghost. Prophet is teaching you all these things. Then you go to the office, and some unbelieving boss gives you a certain suggestion that you are young, you are growing old, your ex are getting it. Why don't you pass somewhere and get a baby? And it becomes something that is in your spirit and you have kept it quietly. You didn't realize Satan was planting things in your heart. You don't hear anything by mistake. Go. <laughs> no voice without, every voice has a, you, the day you are hot, you'll be shocked the things you heard, how they are working as suggestions. You'll be shocked like, hey, why am I thinking like this? It's something you heard. Do you know what he said? How can a young man keep his way pure? Huh? By what? Take it to you. Then he says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not. That means that the words of Satan have I hidden in my heart that I may freely. So the sins you sinned without you realizing how you did it was a hidden word of the devil that you stored. You didn't realize it. So there are words you hide. And they hide waiting for incubation. And they do just pop up and realize that ah, this sin happened. It's like you have to finish sin before you realize that what did I just do? And the young man called me and said, Man of God, Daddy, I've sinned. I said, What happened? He said, I've broken my vow to the Lord. I said, What vow is that? He said, I've done something. I've broken my virginity. I said, Eh. And I said, What happened? He said, Daddy, I don't know. It was on top of the person. I realized I've broken the vow. <laughs> he said, he doesn't know how that thing happened. Why? Thy word. So when the word is hidden there, a word for sin, a word for corruption is hidden. You enter the thing before we need that thing. say, what have I done? Yeah. Because it's hidden. You know why? The proof that it's hidden is because prior to your decision to do it, there was no inhibition. Nothing preempted you till it was carried out before you came to yourself. It's a hidden word. Don't work with guys who talk about side chicks, who talk about how they are cheating on their girlfriends. If you work with them, you are hiding words in your heart. The day of opportunity. I told you last time, some of you are virgins by, uh, of, uh, by circumstance. The day you get a guy who is your crush, you would have lost your virginity since. It's just I didn't get a chance. It's true. It's lack of opportunity. 
So some of the sisters you see sister soldier, sister soldier, it's lack of opportunity. You. So since opportunity is not present, I better focus on the Lord. But if opportunity is present, we'll lose our fire. <laughs> and they make me a hoofy. That's what they say. Because it's opportunity that's not there. So some of you should thank God that you are still, you are still single. Because there are things in your heart. You have hidden things in your heart. You are single, oh, but you are saying, if I catch somebody's son, eh? it is a word you have hidden in you. <laughs> there was a book that we used to use in English comprehension, Obiba JK. <laughs> Obiba JK has taken the lead. <laughs> Obiba JK is running. <laughs> Obiba JK. Yeah. You have hidden a word in your heart. You have hidden a word in your heart. Why are words powerful? Now hear this. There is nothing you have done or are doing or will do that happened by mistake outside your words. It happened by what you said and what you agreed to that you have stored in your spirit. For instance, do you know some people go like, hmm, if this man was not married, then, uh-uh, we will see. Do you know what you just did? You've spoken something that has, is incubating your heart. So the day the man misbehaves, that statement will meet the action. Because you just said that. Yeah. It's a word you've hidden in your heart. Say words are powerful. Say words are powerful. Now, I'll show you quickly. Of course, this thing Dr. George taught us beginning of the year, so I'll show you quickly. But this one part that's so important. Proverbs 18, verse 20 says what? A man shall be satisfied with the, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and the increase of his lips shall he be filled. 21, quickly. Death and what? Ah. Uh, please repeat it. Death and? Ah. Uh, let's repeat it again. Death and life do you realize he didn't say death and life are in the power of Satan do you also realize death and life he didn't say are in the power of God so whether you live or die is a production from your tongue it's not Satan's power neither is it God's power If you learn this lesson today, you understand why he says in Matthew 12 that every idle word. Now, the the picture for the reason the Bible used idle was the idleness of the word meant unintended, unmeant. You didn't mean it. It was a careless word. But he said you will stand in judgment. Now, that judgment is not like on the day of judgment you stand before Jesus and Jesus said that word. No, no. Judgment means that even your careless word you spoke has procured something in the spirit that you face in the days to come. That's why even your jokes should not enter into the extremities of vulgarity and profanity. Because the moment you enter that realm, the idle words have been energized. What that word also means is that careless and ineffective, they are also like inert gases. It means they are waiting for a day of activation. The careless words you said, they are waiting. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's too much for me. I can't stand it. They look idle, but they are waiting for the day of activation. They are inert. They are inactive words. They are waiting for the day something will react to it. And there's legally something will happen to you and realize you can't really stand. You can't stand it. Words. <laughs> it's not Satan. It's not Satan who has the power. Neither is it God who has the power. He gave it to you. Your tongue. That means a child of God, anyhow your life will look like, you empower it by how you talk. I'm rich. When you hear me say that, I'm empowering a life of wealth. When I meet the wealthy, I don't beg. So no matter who is a billionaire I know personally, in in shishi, I'll ask you that. Empower. If you don't use your mouth, So it's not about you are 
You, that's why I say you need revelation. Some of you, you say positive things because if I don't say prophet to talk, that's not revelation, that's tradition. You must meditate on why you must speak the right words. Job 6.25 says, how forceful are right words? I'm not broke. You know, how, you know how I got my, you know what I kept saying? I said that anybody who is not the will of God for my life, I will never say I do to the person. That's what I said. That means that we can date, but if it is not God's will, we'll break up. Before I say I do, it must be God's will. I said that. It was a law I passed. Hallelujah. It's a law. It's this. Any speech you give is a bill in the spirit waiting for a person. Don't joke with your words. Whatever. Look at your life. How you were seven years ago. How you were last year. God give me a ministry that will grow me. Lord expose me to your word. You are probably hearing this because of what you declared two years ago. I'm telling you. You are not here by mistake. You spoke something. Nobody sees an examination resource and say, ah, I'm surprised. You usually say, I said it. It's not even I said it. I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you wrote. You know what you wrote. <laughs> it's not by mistake. You are not here by mistake. That means a child of God. Your future is... is, is look, when you get like that, you understand why even the songs we sing in Ephesus, they are designed a certain way. For instance... There's a song, what was that song? That song that um, um, we were watching the, the pastor was using. No, no, there was another one. Sinner, there was another one. Yes. I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. Do you know what you're saying? It means, you know, you are, you are, you are kind of in, invoking. So some of the, I've forgotten the hymn, but the hymn indicates that the person is a sinner presently. But it's only grace that has saved him. That means that he's saying that as he's standing now, he's still a sinner. You were a sinner who has been saved by grace. Move on! Hallelujah. That's why you're still dealing with sins now. Because you still see yourself as a sinner. Peter was angry anyhow. They called him Saint Peter. Stop saying you are not a saint because you have vices. He saved you, sanctified. Look, as long as you are sanctified, the word saint is from the sanctified. Once you are sanctified, he said, and them that he sanctified, he made of all one. So he took, that's why he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So, and he sanctified us once and for all. So once we are all sanctified, we are, we are a saint. Stop talking anyhow. As for me, if someone talks to me, I can't stand it. You will not be able to stand it. Yes. Why not also say that when someone talks to me, no, I'll be able to stand it. I'm comported. Nobody can trigger me. I'm posed. I'm, I'm cool, calm, collected. I walk, I, walk, I walk in authority. That's how you talk. Forceful words are right words. Why don't you talk the right way? Asko valiyati mumani. You stand in front of the mirror and say, my eyes are straightening. My eyes are straightening. My eyes see well. You know why? Because you will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. Your words is the compendium of how your life will go. Say, he that will love life. And see long, how many days? He said, he must learn. First Peter chapter 3 verse 10. So you have to learn to keep your mouth. It's not everything you say. People are saying it's difficult. To, and they come to you like, why are you not saying something? I'm like, it's not difficult. To. You need to love life and see good days, healthy days, best days, beautiful days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. That's why I told that evil here is anything contrary to God's word. And it's late for no doubt. The earth used me. God now gives me blessing. I can't be broke. The day a man gets pregnant is the day I'll see brokenness. That's how you talk. So you put it at impossibility communication. No, I can't. I know all things. You know, sometimes I lie down and I say, Lord, my brains are optimum. I have a high absorption rate. You know, there are times, sometimes I start, I'm not have seen me do it before. Sometimes I come out, I stand in front of me, I say, in the name of Jesus, if my IQ is 141, I increase to 148. I increase my IQ. I, increase, I talk like that. 
I talk like that. When I realize I'm forgetting things, I don't forget anything. Scriptures are alive. The word of God is alive in my spirit. The word of God is alive in my brain. You don't have what you have not said. If you see a man operating at a certain frequency of breakthrough, ask him and listen to how they talk. Now, when you're talking to me, it's like a Tourette syndrome. Daddy, it's not. No, don't say that. It's like, I don't even think about how you feel. I'll correct you. No, reverse what you do. Because I understand what you just did. You've passed a law. Life is not in the power of Satan. It's in the power of your words. That's why he has given you this. It will help you. Satan cannot speak for you. He will massage your emotions to speak your own death. Satan will massage your own emotions to speak your own failure. He can't do it for you. Because life and death is not in the power of Satan. It is in your tongue. So how can he get you to condemn yourself? He will massage your heart. You are not prepared. You are not ready. It can't work. Will you be a good wife? And as you begin to feel that way, you have balance on the heart. You will say it by mistake. You know, if you comport yourself in front of us, you will say it in your bedroom. The word, you've hidden it. It will show for I told you I went on a detox. Word detox. I don't watch anything. So up to date, ask my wife. When I ask her, how is it going to end? Is somebody dying? Ghana, we call it a jack. English, they call it a protagonist. An antagonist is the killer. Am I lying? So I ask, who is dying? Is it the prota or the anta? When they say antagonist is dying, I say wonderful. I don't like movies that the guy who is doing good dies and evil succeeds. I won't watch. You know why? I'm programming my mind. I'm programming my mind for victory. It was said of the late Benson Idahosa, he never put his car in reverse gear. No, so that, so that his brain knows that we never reverse. So if I have to come to this spot, I'd rather go straight, damn, come here, and I'll come here. I'll, that I'll use reverse, it's a lie. Um, you, if, if I wish you had time to spend time with the great apostles of faith, you will notice there are nuances they communicate. Even their daily posture is designed to empty negativity. It won't allow it. You can't talk about it. One day someone came to me, someone entered Bishop Oedipo's house, and he said, mm, I sense an evil spirit here. He stood up and said, mm, you brought them. <laughs> you brought them. They don't stay here. That's the level. You entertain all sorts of things. Some of you young people are about to marry. You have people calling you in dreams. I had a dream you had divorced your wife. I had a dream you were fighting. If you don't stop that rubbish, it will continue forever. I'm telling you. You must, you must know. Oh, Jesus Christ. You must know the Bible. Why do you let everybody control your life? Because of the things they're saying. I make it. I can never fail. The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I command. I'm a money magnet. I command it in the millions of dollars. I break limits. Recently, one of my sons called me and said, He said, Prophet, by the grace of God, for a long time, I finally sold this house. And I said, Hey. He said, When it's the first time I see a commission of $30,000. Commission. He's selling a house. Before they will bless him, whoever he helps. I said, You see why he took you a year? He said, Prophet, you've been saying it. He said, Yes. You have not seen $30,000 before, one time payment. So they were breaking threshold. I said, now that you're broken it, expect 150,000. Expect 200,000. Then when you get there, by the same protocol, this is wisdom that is profitable to direct. The energy you used to break into $30,000, increase the momentum so you can enter $100,000. But when you enter $100,000, your limit is $999,000. Because there's a threshold in the spirit. If you, you see, some, you have to do some analysis of your life. You notice that there are some things, people bless you up to 990. Nine Ghana city. It never hits thousand. When you break into the thousand because you gave thousands, you realize that people give you up to a certain limit in the thousands. You've not yet entered the tens of thousands. When you also break by that giving, you now enter. If I give thousand dollars, God is God owes me a tithe as my highest treasure. So to enter hundred thousand, I have to move to ten thousand. That's why one million dollars won't find you by this. It seems close, but there's a threshold. I'm getting there. 
Knew him and sanctuary Jesus. This last point I'm bringing up is that it's a strong force to repair bridge. Start using your mouth. The ship is sinking. Start talking. Stop following your, your classmates. Oh, we all apply for universities in America. They are not minding us. They don't mind me. Do you know how I worked in government? At the time I was about to work, they said IMF had given a law that no person should be employed. I said not to me. Because me, I don't want to work. God said I should go and work. It's not now the term because of IMF and work. I'm working. Oh, by the time they realized they've employed me. And the shocking part was when they were interviewing me at civil service head office, I told them. They said, how long do you want to work at them? I said, two years. They said, hey. And strangely, I was the youngest amongst the panel. They said, you are the youngest amongst here, but you're the one who wants to work the least. I said, yes. I'm not here for long. So by the time I'm getting there, my mind, why? I've done the mass. The highest paid civil servant is nowhere compared to what I desire. Then it means I have to become a thief. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. I'm not insulting anybody, but that's the truth. <laughs> You must have to become a thief and add zeros and squeeze yeah, and yeah. steal people's honorarium so I'll, buy, I'll buffer mine. I said, no, I can't be here for long. Because there are some environments when you stay there for long, you start thinking wrongly. So I knew that I have a limit here. I can't stay here for long. Don't enter job and when they pay you 10,000 Ghana, you're happy. Be wise. You are much more than 10. Can I tell you something? Can I say this with all humility? Any institution that pays you a lot of money means you are more than that. If you are working and they pay you five thousand dollars, can I tell you something? It means you are four times worth. But this is what they count. That's why at a certain level, when you want to quit, they beg you. So what they are, they beg you to negotiate your amount. You know why? Because actually, they are giving you a portion of what they make, but they are making much more from your expertise. Think about it. So in the day God tells you, leave and what you have saved and prepared for, go and start your own consultancy. Fear not. Move. Move. And let God's name be glorified. <laughs> Before God yanks you out of that place by events and politics and pain and everything you had will now go to zero. That much more. So how do you talk from today? Start speaking like that. The next time you write an employment letter, there will be weight on your application. Because you said you are much more. So a lot of you here, there's a bridge you must repair. You are much more than the salary they are trying to pay you. But you feel that, e 3,000, oh man of God, it's not bad. And you see people come to you with an application, they don't pay me 3,000, they are happy. I'm, oh, 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 oh. I'm sad. Spend 30 days and they pay you 3,000. I'm not saying be greedy, but I'm telling you that if you are certain, accept it on the basis that this is foundation, it's much more important. Otherwise, you know what? The way they pay you every month has a way of keeping you like a puppy on the leash. You will never dream big again. It will make you think that 3,000 is your cap. Because they've, they've salaried you there. And you see Christians who believe that 3,000 is what God will use to take care of them every month. But they are lying. Because if you do the math, there is no way in this present Ghana that 3,000 took care of you. There is a magic happening somewhere. You must decode it. <laughs> You must decode it. You will notice that it's always God in his grace. Say, I'm rich. I'm a plutocrat. Every time you calculate a plutocrat's wealth, by the time you are done calculating, that's it. So you can never arrive at the full wealth of a plutocrat. That's what it means to have work in plutocracy. It means that by the time you say, Prophet Adam is worth $100 million, at the end of the dot you put on the balance sheet, I've gone to 150. So by the time you come after two weeks, I'm now 700. You're like, ah, in two weeks, you increase by 600. And by the time you're done with that evaluation, I've moved another 100 million. That's plutocracy. So you can never ascertain. You can say they are about. Because the truth of our wealth is not in what we have in the account. It's what has left us. That's why I tell you to record. So you can know how rich you are. Because I wish that it abounds to your account, which is in heaven. So whatever is leaving you is the real definition of what you are worth. You know what it means. If something can leave you and you didn't die after I left you, then you are really worth it. Because if $7,000 left you and you were able to eat, bath, drive, and $7,000 left you this month, then boy, you are rich. Because some people keep $7,000 and it's not enough. Proverbs 13.3, add that scripture.
Because Second Timothy 1.13, Paul said to Timothy, Give, he said, hold on to sound words. After the parting of sin in me. Second Timothy 1.13. Proverbs 13 3 says what? He that what keep his mouth, keep at his life, and he opens his mouth, shall end up. And our version says, a talkative. It's not where you talk. Completely have to be quiet. Learn to. Some of you are proud to be talkative. As for me, I talk. Well done. You will say everything you are thinking, and everybody will know what you are thinking. But Isaiah 41 verse 15 says, He will give you a sharp. Fresher instrument. Isaiah 41 verse 15. I will make you a new sharp fresher instrument, having teeth, that thou shalt thresh the mountains. Now he said the thresher instrument, which is actually uh, a sickle. Now he said the sickle has teeth. Now the sickle is like a sword, it's like a double edged sword. It can cut the grass. But he said this sickle has teeth. And we know that the double edged swordness of the word is the double stoma. Stoma is double mouth. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is double-edged. The word edge is mouth. So the word of God is double mouth. So he will give you a sharp threshing instrument which has teeth. He's speaking of your mouth. Your mouth is the instrument that has teeth. The Bible said you will thresh the mountains and beat the hills. That means that any mountain in front of you, speak to it, you come down. You come down. You will not survive in my body. Do that for two weeks. You will see that the symptoms you had two weeks ago has left you. Stop owning sicknesses. I have allergy. I have this. I have lupus. I have autoimmune. Who told you? I have alopecia. Who told you? Who told you? Use your mouth to thresh that mountain. And stop owning it. Because sometimes owning a sickness makes you live in victimhood. You feel you deserve a certain dimension of uh, uh, um, excuse because you are not. No. That's what the man said. 38 years. If anybody can help me, then I would have been healed. And Jesus said, you're not serious. How long have you been here? I have nothing. Because until God gave it to me, I don't have it. He said, a man has nothing the Lord did not give him. So I asked you a simple question. If God gave you that sickness, then I permit you to say you have that knowledge. That's how you think. So when I rewired my thinking, God told me, I don't give sickness. So never say you have. Because if you have it, then I give it. A man has nothing save that which God gave him. So if you have it, you are saying God gave you that autoimmune sickness. And you have called God a liar. You have cursed God. That's how to curse God. To wrongly accuse God of giving you what he cannot give you. So I can't have it. Because God can't give it to me. If God can't give it to me, then wherever it came from, whatever breach in the spirit, by my mouth, I estricate. No, you have to command spiritual surgical seizures and uh, procedures. Speak every curse in my family by the word of my mouth. I am a repairer of the breach. I separate myself. That's how you talk. This pattern ends where it ended. It did not continue in my life. You speak like that. Your family, everybody gives birth to one for the past four generations. In my day, because of the breach, I will give birth to four. You talk like that. Makaru Sada. Oh, you got to. You got to. Because there's a realm you get to. Double portion is not enough. Another realm you get to, 104 is not enough. You need to enter 1,000 because you are repair of the bridge. Sharp treasure instrument. That means every morning you wake up. Every morning, hip the mountain one more. Because Bible says you are treasuring it. So God has told you you will marry. For three years, that prophecy is hanging. It's waiting for the treasure instrument of your mouth. Because Bible says what? He will what? Beat it small and make the hills like chaff. It means behind the hill is your breakthrough. Behind the mountain is your testimony. But something is standing between what has been promised you. Use your mouth to hewn it down. I walk in my thousands. We own properties. You speak like that. There are people waiting for us to build. 
He said, I have some guests in my office. He said, man of God, God told us that any building you are doing now, we are ready to support. And God has put on our heart to build one of your locations. He said, when the time is up, we will build it. You, you are there. People have met us. He said, I had a dream and God commanded me. And the day you are building, he said, building have to build for the ministry. So by the time you realize, you are like, did it? it's not magic. We've been speaking it. I told you I spoke it. The day is coming. We have a hunger. We are in a city. Helicopters are landed there. It's not for show because we will not put it on the internet for anybody's gain. We know why we have helicopters. We know why. So that we can do charitable works. When there is war in Liberia, when there is war in any country, we will fly our jets there and drop it in the air like humanitarian aid. That is why we have such things. It's a thinking process to it. I told you that if there's no revelation behind it, then we have entered ritual. So we are not copying any manner without God telling us why we must have arms. Don't joke. There are high level things happening here. God will start with you. I said God will start with you. Yes. All the testimonies you have received so far is nowhere compared with what is coming. I said you have entered the season of rest. Yes. <laughs> and in rest you speak. Sit in your room and say, Kadoli attire. This month, they approve my contract. Speak in your room. And when you wake up in the morning, there will be oppositions in the office. But enforce what you said. That what I said must come to pass. It's not been done before. But in my day, I will own two positions in two different institutions. And there will not be contradiction. As you speak it, a law will be made just especially for you. Let it be a sharp stretching instrument. Tomorrow morning, when you can speak, my day is perfect. Favor with Uber drivers. You need favor everywhere. So when you enter the Uber, your, your declaration makes any nonsense, disobedient, arrogant Uber driver. There's an Uber driver. I say, Uber driver, some of them When you declare, you sit in the car, there's favor. I have favor with policemen. I have favor with fellow pedestrians. I have favor with fellow drivers. So because of that declaration, nobody comes to hit your car because you have declared favor before you left the house. Even your car requires that declaration. The last one. I'm talking about repairing the bridge. I'm not talking about the issues. I'm talking about the, I've done the issues from ignorance as the major point. I'll come again another time with another question. But today, let me just give you how to repair the bridge. One last one. A bridge can be repaired with money. This one, take it seriously. I, I mentioned it that I will share on it when I meet you in seven, when we're doing the prayers. Say money. James chapter 5, verse 2. James 5, 2. Huh. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are what? Moth eating. Next. Your gold and silver are conquered and rust of them shall be a witness against you. You shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye shall have treasure heaped unto you for the last days. Now he's talking about some people who have gathered wealth for themselves. And he says they've gathered wealth for the last day. And the reason why they are doing this is because they have done something that is based on the fact that inflation is not the problem of the world. The problem of the world is not that when inflation occurred, people lost their money. There's money around. But the difference that's happening is that there's something called monopoly going on. Some people are hoarding money for themselves. And Bible even says something. Go to the next verse. Next verse. You have hired your labors and you have reaped down your fields and you have kept back your payment by fraud. So he's saying that in these days we have entered, because of the spirit of monopoly, even your bosses will not pay you what you are due. So there will be a lot of strife and a lot of, uh, what do you call it, strikes because People's wages are being withheld because of fraud. And the Christ of them have reaped and entered into the ears of the Lord of Sa Lords of Sabaoth. Next. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanted. You have nourished your heart as in a day of slaughter. Verse 6. You have condemned and killed the just. So he's speaking about people doing all it takes to make money. He said that is the characteristics of the end time. Why? Verse 7. Be patient therefore unto them. So Right unto the of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So right unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Businessmen will be characterized by underpaying workers. 
delaying salary payment, wrong emolument, all sorts of things are happening. And he says it's because of the last day. So he's saying inflation is not a product of the absence of money. Inflation is the product of somebody hoarding the money. Some people have decided to gather for themselves against the last day. Can I tell you something? All this climate change, climate change is wonderful. But there's another economic agenda behind it. They are storing the oil reserves for a certain day. The Bible speaks about it in Isaiah. There's a battle that is coming that shall be fought in the high region and the fat provinces of Medina. Find it, Medina. M E D I N A. <laughs> I didn't say Medina, I said Medina. <laughs> M E. I know some people pronounce it like that, Medina, but <laughs> M E D I N A, Medina, Medina. Hallelujah! Oh, clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Have you found it? I found it. Okay. So there's going to be an oil battle. The word fat provinces is the oil region. Oil regions. That's what I wanted them to find. So we check other versions. Oil regions. So there's going to be an oil battle in the last days. So all this thing, eco energy, green energy, is so that some oils can be stored. Some oils can be stored. Man, can Bible give you in it? Now, if you jump to anything anyhow without seeing the revelation behind it, can you find it? You can't find the word Medina. Check fat provinces. <laughs> I hope you are using King James. Use King James. Sometimes some of the texts, when you use the name, they don't. All right. Find it for me. I want you to find it. Same money. Hallelujah. Are you there? You've seen it, eh? All right. The Lord bless you for seeing it. Is that what? Let's find it. Let's find it. So find it for me, Daniel 11. Don't think that's it. But you, let's go there. Yes, 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 Please give me music. Those online, they are wondering what you are doing here. Mm. Yes, yes, let's go. Yes, 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 Oh, you die.
Is that? Okay. Let's read. Hallelujah. I'll get it to you next week. Okay. I just want us to move quickly. But of course, the fattest place of the province, this actually. That scripture is there. I'm trying to find it. Is there? What? It's not that one. Okay, don't worry. So, you enter, and this speaking of the Antichrist, and where he will come and stand, uh, he will enter through the fattest province. I'll get into that one. It's in Isaiah. I know that it's in Isaiah. I'll get it for you. If you listen to the teaching I did on um, understanding the calendar of the end times, I give those details of the battle of Megiddo, Gog, and Magog. And I mentioned that there was a battle that would be fought over the oil regions of the earth. So I, I know what I'm talking about. That's why I just wanted you to get that. It's okay. Don't worry. Let's go. Now, so all I'm trying to bring your mind to is that there's going to be an economic battle in the last days. He who wields the economic power is actually going to move the day. So, child of God, don't be selfish and think that you need money just for your family. You need money to move some dimension. There's coming a day where, you see, Israel will run to a place called Petra, the rock city, in Edom. That's Isaiah 63, it's there. They will enter into Edom. And Edom is a rock city. It's like an Alcatraz, but it's a city. An Alcatraz is a prison that is carved in a rock. But this is a city in the rock. And he says, they that shall see the abomination of the desert, they flee to the mountains. And that's what he's talking about. The mountains is where people will be housed in, in Matthew 24. So it means that in the last days, God is going to use city ministries. What I mean by that is what we have in Canaan land, what we have in Redeem Camp, what we have in Potter City. Those are the kind of things God will use. So that in that confinement, any law or instruction that is given that is contrary to church, like Typical example, lockdown. During lockdown, anybody who is staying in that province can go to church because they are in a certain confined area. They don't use national grid. They don't use national water. They have their own system. Because there's coming a day there will be an antagonistic approach against the church. What happened was just a phase one wave. It looks like right now people are becoming okay with the church. There's a wave coming. They are still fighting us, but there's a wave coming. And we need to believe God. So when you hear a prophecy that Ephesus will build a city, it's not for personal gain. It's to be a safe heaven. It's a refuge city for people who are running from different countries. Muslims who have been persecuted, they'll run to the city and stay there. And we'll have our own educational system. Where your children will be taught by the Lord. And this whole agenda of whatever it is, your children will be immune from it. Now, almost every cartoon, they are putting same-sex man. Every cartoon. Cartoon, oh, cartoon. So, you see, your daughter is now being trained that she too, she can kiss another girl. Yeah, it's, it's a wiring. I told you. Because, before you choose the number, they've made you see, 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 see. You know today, most of your definition of beauty is the TV that has. A lot of you don't see black as beautiful. It's foreigners who see black as beautiful. So you call a black person in secondary school an Arjun. You call him nightmare. Because the person is black. What's that for? They call him Shadow. <laughs> there was a nickname called Shadow. It means he's as black as a shadow. Some guy with his nickname was Midnight. <laughs> it means the thickest of the darkness. That's his color, Midnight. And the teasing was that when he's in the dark, we can't see. <laughs> It's only white ball. <laughs> His eyes are the only things you see. And so you have been wired to a certain kind of beauty. Recently, in the past four or five years, they call it beard gang. So it's beauty to have a beard as a man. So even people can't grow it. What's that? Are they not born? Who, who, who? They, they are forcing to grow beard. <laughs> Do you remember that manure? <laughs> it was round, round, round like that. You sprinkle it like that. That's how people's beard is growing. You are forcing men to grow beard. <laughs> because of beard gang. 
So all I'm trying to tell you is that if you don't take care, you are being wired into a certain appreciation and definition of life. That's why it's an anointing you need like John the Baptist. You must be raised as a rebel from the wilderness. Your measurement of anything is not according to the standard of the generation. He said, who is this that cometh out of the wilderness? Our beautification and our perfumery is that we come out of wilderness. We are not accustomed to the world. We are not in Egypt. Neither have we entered our glorification in heaven. So where we stay is called wilderness. We can't define life by the world. You know, that's why sometimes God puts you in a situation where you're alone. So you can evaluate that there are some things you call beauty. It's not important. Wig can be bought. I like a woman. Effect. All the natural hair is it's all summer wig. Yes. Oh, yeah. Some of the natural hair. Like you see a woman with natural hair. Some they wear wig. You don't know. Some, I prophesy. <laughs> Who lay hands to say, ah? The thing is not, if we don't feel the roots. Once a while, they will show us their nakedness. Then they will pull it back out. Jesus Christ, son, I awake. And I used to ask my wife, is that, is that natural? So it's awake. I said, ah. What do you see some of Afro? I say, is that not just say it's a wig? I say, how? He say, it's, it, it says a wig. So you, as a man, you know. So all the nonsense thing you are listening, good hair, this hair, you can be deceived. And ladies, now men are wearing, they are also wearing wig. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> say, God is my baba. Airport, you know, it's sincere. Not the patch is season wig. Kind of fade. So for his when you awake, yeah. If you will deceive us, we'll deceive you more. <laughs> Wait till we know how to deceive. We will glue it. It will fade the head. Mama! <laughs> Two weeks time, you see that? <laughs> you forget yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say money. money. Now, money is very necessary for the redemption. Number one, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 8. Proverbs 13, 8. Proverbs 13, verse 8. Verse 13. So don't worry, we couldn't find that scripture. I was just passing through, that's why I went there. I'm not teaching eschatology. When I come to that one, I get to it. Don't worry. So please, those online, don't ask anybody what scripture I was probably looking for. I'm not using it as my main point. I was just giving an addendum. All right. First, I think, let's read together. I want to go. Well, oh, let's read again. So the ransom of a man's life are what his riches, but the poor hear it not. That means that child of God, everything you need to get out of, God has given you money. The day you understand this truth, nobody will take. Somebody asked me one, he said, why do you like giving like that? I said, you don't understand. I saw it a long time ago. That there are things I'm looking for. Like Baba recently, when I gave message, he said, there are things I'm working in today. It's not prayer that gives seeds. There's a life. The Bible says, all grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. All grace. There's a realm you work in, eh? you are able to speak medically. Scientifically, economically, legally, and people wonder, did you learn all these things? It's giving. Look at what he said. Huh? God is able to, why? Verse 7. Go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. And but I said this, uh-huh. Every man should give a cup, not grudgingly, but God loveth a cheerful giver. Verse 8. And God, the moment he asks end, it means it's in opposition to the previous verse. And God is able. The moment giving becomes part of your operation, you are able to access all grace. So you are a prophet, but you'll be able to teach. Most of my teaching anointing and my ability to recite scriptures is not me memorizing them. It is seed. It is seed. Show me a secret today. It's impartation. People think I cram all these things. I cram Greek, Hebrew. I know the numbers. I know the letters. I know the ik. I know the cow. I know the nephil. And it's, not, it, it's not like that. It's too much information for your brain. It's like my sword is in your head. Do you know what it means for a whole application to be in your head? 
Even the white man realized it can't be in your head, so they put it on the phone. Then you have thought everything in your head. It's not magic, it's impartation. All grace. Oh, unless, I, unless you don't have a grace I want, I'm bringing you offering. Oh, yes. I learned that he, he, he said, boy, anything you look for, you see it. That's why it is blessed to give. Because you see, you are collecting, but something has left you. The one collecting the seed, something leaves you. You don't know. It's a transaction experience. And if I put it in your hand, I've collected something from you. You are not aware. It's able to hold all grace up. Now he says, so you're, you're the ransom of your life. Look what he says in 126. The Lord is going to turn the captivity of Zion, and we shall be like them that dreamed. Then Bible says, see what he said, though. He is standing your captivity, verse 3. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you put laughter in your mouth, and they will say the Lord has done great things, and we are glad. Verse 4. They that what? Verse 5. Go, go to verse 5. Uh-huh. They that so in tears. So the way to turn your captivity into laughter is sowing in the pain. You need to turn around. So some people are in tears, but they are not sowing. So he said, when you are in tears, Carry your offering. God, I've been single for long. I need this. That's what, by six. He that go forth, weeping, bearing, and sometimes they see there, you are sowing, it's not precious. The energy of seed is in its valuation to you. It's not just giving. It's <laughs> he says, shall doubtless. That means I'm going to something I don't like. The solution sometimes is not in prayer. It's in offering. How do I know this? First Samuel 24. The Bible says that when David counted Israel, because the plague descended on the nation, people were dying. Verse 24. People were dying everywhere. First Samuel 24, 24. And when people were dying, David took an offering. The Bible says he went to the threshing floor of Arauna. And he said, he will give something. He said, I cannot give anything that has not cost me. Verse 25. The Bible says, after he gave, uh, built an offer, offered offerings, and then treated the Lord, and the plague stayed. So people were dying in his house. David went to give sacrifice. Do you know the power of seed? Everybody, every king must give a boo, but Solomon gave 1,000. After giving 1,000 boos, God came. He didn't pray. It's God who came and woke him in the night. Young man, what do you want? Blank check because of the offering. David said, I can't give anything that's not cost me. I'm going to show you something that will worry you a little bit. Look, your offering is your ransom. You are work. Can I ask you a question? You are working a job that pays 1,005. Is that enough to take care of you? That's, that's God. Te- well, when I was working huh, in government, I resigned at a salary of 1,317 Ghana City. 68 pesos. That was the amount I, I resigned with. Now, that amount, after seven years of working, that's my last salary in 2017. That's what they were, they were paying me when I quit my job. I knew from the start that nobody marries and stays in the marriage of a 1,300 salary. I knew. So I knew from the start that that 1,003 was my ransom. God is my eternal witness. My wife is my eternal witness. My salary was my tight and my monthly seed. Plus excess from God's blessing me through preaching. So everything I earned went to God. Nothing stayed. Because when I started working, I didn't get salary for eight months. The Lord said, practice. You see, a lot of you waste your trying moments. He said, practice in the time you are waiting for salary. Rather than borrowing, I must train my spirit to conduct money without salary. So one time they deleted my name from payroll. And for about four months, I didn't get salary. I was rather giving loan out. I don't receive salary for four months, and I was giving loan out. So the day God tells you to quit, you are not afraid. Your spirit is robust to sustain certain financial demand. You know the buttons to press for wealth to find you. You know what to do to provoke the next money. You know what money that touches your hand that must go back in the bank. My first honorarium overseas. It's not foolishness. It is understanding. That chapter that must be augmented. And to speak in the days to come. Your money is your ransom for your soul. 
What are you going through? And you have money. You see, I'm not saying everybody, but there are some people, God blesses you with money. So the money, you will see some rich people. They don't pray. They don't fast. They just go to business trips. And they've decided to make somebody the receiver of ransom. They'll constantly have money. And you'll not understand why. Because they've made ransom. Second Kings chapter 3. A very dangerous story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what he said in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5? Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. He says what? As, go there. No, go to Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. As what? Thou knowest not. What is the. Now go to verse 4. See what he said. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Then he says, as thou. It means it's in reference to giving. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit. That means that giving is the of the oh your stinginess is costing you. Oh you gotta be smart man. You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. It's not foolishness that we are giving. It is a revelation. Your giving is a product of revelation. You are not giving away, you are giving your way out. You are not giving away, you are giving your way out. Be smart and posture yourself in such a way that, look, oh, I told you many times, I've received blessings from strange men of God. You know why? Often. That since when I saw the pastor of course, he said, who is that man of God who came? I need to see him again. You have to be smart. And we don't give because we have plenty. My wife is my witness. Sometimes I can clear the account. And so, honey, let's, go. let's believe God. I'm believing God. Go go and do some more. Some people are looking at me and their wife. <laughs> I come back there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's what I'm saying. I've trained my spirit to the point where by the time I clear, I know God will supply. Move at the frequency God tells you this is the ransom you need to give. It might cost you tears. But give it now. Because there are some things you are going through. You need to use sin to stop. You've heard me, I've never, I don't preach this kind of message. The only time every source takes offering is because we are hosting a man of God. Am I lying? This year, since Prophet Nana, have I asked you to sow any seed? Have I asked you? So that's the only time I ask you to sow. I'll never call you in front who has thousand Ghana. No, I won't do that. God has not given that grace. So the only time you hear that, any, every now I don't even ask you to sow. I say, anybody who has any special seed, let's prepare for Dr. Joyce coming, go and sow. It's between you and God. But if you are smart enough, you understand the dynamics of God. So it's the way of the spirit. And he said the same way when you give. Giving is like the way a bones are formed in a pregnant woman's stomach. It means you are giving. It looks as if you are spending money. But you are doing something in the spirit. Cast your bread upon the waters. After many days they shall come. So there are things you reap because of a giving you gave yesterday. There are miracles God will do for your children. There are scholarships your children will enjoy because of a giving you gave two years ago. You have no idea. It's a giving. There's a, there's a preservation that will come upon your family because of giving. But look at this last one. That's dangerous. Dangerous giving. The first thing God required for many humanity was giving. And Cain and Abel. Cain was a farmer. Abel was a livestock keeper. The Bible says, and they brought their offering. The first activity of the born race was their giving. Because God determined that your living will be dependent on your sacrifice. How you live life is dependent. You see, when we start talking about this one, people are feeling some way. Because it tells you that there's a spirit attacking it. You want anointings, but you don't understand that it's a giving protocol. And the painful part is that you sit there and do analysis over your life. How much do you spend on yourself? How much do you spend on your best friend? That tells you that you have treasures where your heart goes. How much do you spend on plane tickets? How much do you spend on a hotel bill? How much do you spend on that girl or boy you like? No, do the mass. It tells you that the problem is not the seed. It's just that it's not precious to you to move you out of your predicament. Some of you who are single, by now you should be sowing special seed for your children. The father, I get my twins. Father, I activate the altar. My house, they give birth to one. By this offering and sacrifice, I will give birth to four. You are sowing seed before. You'll be shocked. Very soon they'll start prophesying to you. I see four children in your house. 
And you wrote it on there. They were the children of Isaac. There will be great nations by the seed that made the proclamation. What did Isaac need that Rebecca couldn't give him? He owned the livestock that Jacob was rearing. So actually, the mother and father goat or sheep was from the stock of Isaac. And he read them to have them. And bring me venison. So if you check the scripture, it was Rebecca who caught the animal and prepared it like Esau does. So the only duty of Jacob was to present it. Say, Alain, he didn't even cook it. That means that God was trying to tell us something. <laughs> There's something the man had to feel to release some dimension. Yeah, of course, they're not asking for much, but you see, that's why I said it's evaluation. The widow had might, and the might was the least currency, and she was a widow. That means that all she had was what was in the basket. So it's not about plenty. Somebody can give 50 cities, and to God, it is higher than your 10,000. Because your 10,000 came from plenty, 70, 70, you have $70,000 in the account, and you brought God 10,000 Ghana. It looks okay. People will be impressed. But somebody has only 200 cities and bought God 150. It's higher value than your 10,000. Because 70,000 dollars is 700,000. You didn't even give God tight. 70,000. Give God 10. But you, have, you bought a car for your small girl. So if you understand. And they bought tickets for the girl to Dubai. But that the man of God will spend their money. And they don't realize that is the very thing that will buy you out of trouble. And the painful part is, Satan will run you dry. Then when I'm now praying for you and God needs ransom from you, it's not there. Because you have spent ransom on the wrong person. That's why I tell you to record. Because if you record, you can't write, seed for Dubai trip for side check. Let that be an offering. The Lord will meet you. The Lord will meet you. You can't record it. There are some things when you do and God, oh, you provoke heaven. My father was telling us a story this afternoon. He says, there was a church in Cape Coast. Some, some rowdy people entered the church and started breaking things. And the pastor and the members were there. He told nobody, nobody should react. Say, allow them. Broke chairs, broke screen, broke instruments. Somebody even weaved in the offering bowl. Hey. The pastor said, leave them. Do you know, in exactly 12 months, all the people died. And they didn't pray. The pastor said, nobody should talk. Allow them. In 12 months, all, one by one, everybody was part of that riot. riot there are some things. That's why in the realm of rest, your not fighting gives God absolute opportunity to render. You see, he had in Pharaoh's heart for what he wanted. He wanted to give absolute annihilation. You know why? Because he allowed Pharaoh's heart to be soft. And he said, no, if this guy lets them go, he will still be alive. God twisted his heart again. He said, no, I'm not, I'm not satisfied. God said, yes, feel it. He got closer to the water. And his death was calling him. <laughs> so as he was entering the water, God said, finally, I can wipe you from the face of the earth. So sometimes, your silence gives God full rope to finish what has been bothering you for years. Stop interrupting God's judgment. Second Kings chapter. This is a very dangerous question. This, this will validate what I'm telling you right now. You know, all of you here, I can speak like Paul. I desire no man's offering. Neither desire any man's gift or money. I like, you know that. Oh, yeah, proving to you many times. I tell you. Mm. Amen. It came to pass in the camp of Israel that the, so the Israelites were fighting the Moabites. So that, look at this one. When they were fighting, they fled before the Moabites who were fighting Israel. Fled. They were running. And they, but they went forward smiting the Moabites. So they followed Moab into their country. So it's like Ghana is fighting Cote d'Ivoire. Then once we are beating them, we enter Cote d'Ivoire and start beating them there. Look at verse 25. Said. 
And they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land, cast every man in stone and filled it and stopped all the wells. So they filled the wells. They entered their town. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, oh, I nearly brought Manchester in the matter. But, you know, it's like home and away match. Hallelujah. And they entered and filled all their waters and all their good destroyed it. The slingers went and smote everybody. Verse 26. When the king of the Moab, of Moab, saw that day he was losing the battle, he took his 700 swordsmen who drew the sword, the special forces, and went towards even the king of Edom. Uh, but they realized they couldn't even stop the battle. Let's see what verse 27 said. Look at this. And the king of Moab did, Moab did something. He took his eldest son, the crown prince, who when he, the king, dies, this boy should rule and killed him on battleground. He gave his blood off. And Bible says, and he bent him on the offering. So his own son, he cut off his neck. Put him on the slab, set fire to it, and roasted the boy. Towards the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and went to his own land. Verse 28. Look at this. And now cried and said, so if you read the story, the man used his boy to end the siege of Israel against him. So that Israel were like, hey, his own son, they turned back. By a sacrifice, he was able to turn the battle. For his weapons. Do you know how Balaam wanted to curse Israel? He said, Balak, stand by thy burnt offering. The dangerous thing of this life is, when you are sleeping and people know how to invoke altars, people are sacrificing goods. People have cut their blood into pots. To ensure you never succeed. And you are sleeping. And God said, this dimension you have got into. You know what he's trying to tell you? You go forth bearing precious seed. That means that a man and the money he has is tied to his heart. Meaning that, as Matthew chapter 6 said, if my heart is grieving, there is pain and frustration in my heart. My offering has the same emotion. That's why I say you go bearing precious seed. So your seed is weeping like you. Your seed is confused like you. It's in pain like you. He said, when you drop it, you will doubtless come back rejoicing. So you are sleeping whilst people are offering things to destroy your life. And the Lord told you that, take a seed. Take an offering. And the Bible says, when David did it, it stopped the siege against Israel. And people bring me certain seeds, and it's too small. But God tells me, and I want to tell them, please, take it back. I don't need it. But God said, if you don't allow them, they will never break out. Pastor Dirk is here. He was not working. Do you remember? One day, he came, you came to give me some 20 Ghana cities. I said, ah, but you, do you even have money? So many years ago, probably 20 cities, I said, he said, daddy, I need to sow. That's how he became an executive director's personal assistant. In the company he's working in. Then his boss too left. And I told him, boy, your seed will speak for you. They've tried to do things. It's not working. The new boss now wants to work with you. That's how it works. Your seed will speak. But it's just that Satan manipulates you to feel like eh, somebody, will, I, we don't need it. It's not much. It's money you use to buy. It's not for ice cream. There's a day ice cream will come, you can buy 30 gallons. Yes, no, there's a day will come, you can buy a gallon, fill a swimming pool and swim. Oh, oh. It's not in that day. You are not in the day where you swim in ice cream. This is the days to buy ransom for your life. Hear me now, child of God. I love you. You don't understand this. Oh. Hear me now. My wife is my witness. My father will tell me, say, every major time in this life. Mentors, every day. Ah, you are getting sick. All of them. Oh, you know why? There's something I broke. And any time I collect and they say, "Me down," the hand of God. You see, sometimes I'm talking, I'm switching, switching, switching. It's, it's impartation by seed. It's not me making. Because in myself, I'm not even aware. Some I'm doing, I'm like, ah, this thing is moving this way. So you want to repair the breach? Your money can do it. 
money can do it. Your money can do it too. I said, your money can do it too. I said, what? Your money can do it too. There was a bridge on the earth and Noah killed the bear. God has told him to preserve the clean animals and they were few. Then Noah goes to take the few animals he has preserved through the flood and kills them for God. I said, when God smelt it, he made a covenant. As long as the heavens and the earth, seed time, harvest, cold, winter, he said, I will not destroy the earth again. So he repaired the breach by his sacrifice. The money God is giving you is to buy life. It's a ransom for life. You see something going wrong in your family, write the person's name on it. Say, Father, I take this offering. I know it's not much, but it's valuable to me. I should be eating, but I'm giving it. I should book. And sometimes, you don't know what I do. Sometimes I go, because my wife will come and say, she thinks I'm doing ritual. I'll kneel down in the hall. And I'll kneel down and I'll go. And the Lord said, pray. And as I'm praying, tears will fall on the envelope. And I lift and say, God, this offering has my tears. Do something. There's a last card called sacrifice. When you smear the blood, God has no option. Move. There are some things when you wake up, God will tell you, rise up, carry your seat. Well, so in your father's life, let him pray for you. Why? Because somebody has cut his blood and said, I swear, you will not prosper. As long as my blood is part of this, I've activated God. You to use your, your money too does not need blood. Your money is your sweat, your time, and your blood. So your money too can be used in, that's why they call it Sika Yemoja. Money is blood. Tonight, giving you the keys to repair the bridge. Use your words. Somebody use words to destroy it. Use your words, correct it. Use your offering to correct it. Sometimes you have to even tell God, how much should I show? So, yeah. That's why every year when I pray, I say, God, how much am I giving you this year? I say, change it to the summer. I say, Lord, are you sure? He say, yes. I say, okay. I believe you. And everything God said I should give, consistently he has been happy. Consistently he has been happy. And I dare not trust man. Today I open the doors for you. You and God. Ransom. You can do ransom for your family. Lord, this is the offering for my father and my mother. As I lay at the altar, remember my house. Because how did they send your family into that captivity? Somebody killed an animal and said, anybody connected to the Njibo Siyanku family, this should happen to them. So you, when you take your offering, right? anybody connected to this seed, my loins, I will say, levy pay tight in the loins of Abraham. It's time to repair them. Are there words you spoke in us and snared you? Speak now. Reverse it. Reverse it. Sick of what I wish. Elohim Madonna. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Just pray. All of you pray. Elohim Madonna. Sick of what I wish. Everybody lift your voice and just pray. Pray. Lord, repair the breach. Repair the breach in my family. Repair the breach in my family. Let the hand of the Lord be lifted over you. Every breach against men of God. People have spoken the word over your life. Let there be a reverser. Let there be a reverser. God smell the sweet smelling savor of my offering. Reverse it. Reverse it. Any evil speaking in your heart. Reverse it. Koskapali Bataya. Elohim Madonna. Ebaro Sokoto mi Brazil Brasa Pradosi Atalala. Akobos Kapala Bataya. Escobo Bobo Shataya. Restore the breach. Repair the breach. Wherever.
wherever the family went wrong, wherever I went wrong, Lord, tonight, mercy. By my words, I remove every snare, every trap. We forgive ourselves. We forget the past. This one thing I do, my primal compelling focus. I look tomorrow. I look to tomorrow. I forget yesterday. We enter the spirit, not by the flesh, not by might. We enter the spirit. Whatever is inconsistent in our life, people have promised us and we are not seeing the miracle. There are breakthroughs that are near, near breakthrough experience. Every disappointment we've constantly faced. Today we repair the breach by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare by the power of the Holy Ghost and not the enterprise of the flesh. Every breach is repaired. What happened to my father will not happen to me. What happened to my mother will not happen to me. The breach is repaired. The breach is repaired. I'm called the repairer of the breach. Therefore I assume my office. I assume my anointing. Every activity of the flesh. Every user in my life. Every strength of my flesh is broken in the name of Jesus. Father, let me see the ransom. The ransom you have put in my hand. Let me know how to use money to redeem time. To redeem opportunities. To redeem situations. Show me how to use money as my ransom. Oh, by my words, oh God, we design my future. I design my future. The best happens to me. I deserve the best in life. I cannot fail. I refuse to fail. The anointing of God is upon me. By my words, Lord, I recap and calibrate my journey. I use my tongue to redirect my ship. I redirect the ship of my life. I do not forsake my own mercy by observing my vanities. Oh, we break away from guilt. Whoever is struggling with guilt tonight, the power of God is breaking you away from it. Skatali matata, escape Move on. Jesus is waiting for a, a moment with you. Jesus is waiting for a lifetime with you. Move on. Rasaka tole be sakata. The sobo shababa. Hallelujah. 
In the times of ignorance, Lord, we have received illumination. Now lift your voice and pray. Any contact with anybody, any activity that was sexual with anybody, that open portals against your life, that open up opportunities from hell against you, whether by masturbation or with somebody, lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, in time past, in the present, we declare in the name of Jesus, any entity that is connected to our family, that tries to show up in the night to have their way with us in our sleep tonight we truncate that transaction we break that authority we break the strength of that covenant death will no more be with us and hell will not invite guests unto us by revelation we reverse activities by revelation we push back the operation Catalia, Rasite Telaka. If we were involved with a married man, if we were involved with a married woman, father implications thereof, we reverse the operations of darkness. Asepele Bekatoya, Lord, remember us in your wrath. Mercy, Lord, upon your people. Mercy, Lord, upon my failures. Mercy, Lord, upon my errors. Because it is your mercy that comforts my failure. It is your mercy that makes propitiation for my error hey observe not lying vanities so that you don't forsake your mercy we activate the mercy of God we activate the mercy of God we activate the mercy of God in Lagos Mercy, mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, have mercy upon your children, have mercy upon us. We raise the bridge. We repair the bridge. Raza de bota kita palabata. La 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 bata ita. Any word we have kept in our heart. Any declaration we have kept in our heart. A lotamba sata pa. Raso patala. That is not of God. That will enhance sin. Lord, we destroy those words. We dissipate those words. In the name of Jesus. Alekotamita tayata. Our marriages will work. Our marriages will not fail. Our marriages will be what we are fair proof. We are men and we will love our wives. We will not enter illicit affairs. We will not open doors against our family. I pray for the men here that the Lord will strengthen you so that by your hands you will not destroy your house. By your activities you will not frustrate your family. We shut every door we have opened. 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 Every door from our mind. Every door in our soul. Every door from our bodies. We shut it. In the catapult. Our wives will not pay for it. Our children will not pay for it. Let God raise godly men. 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 We make covenant like Job that our eyes shall behold the word. Our eyes shall not behold a meeting. Our eyes shall behold the word. Our eyes shall not behold a meeting. By our words, we move ourselves from that which is natural to men and we enter that which is natural to God and we declare in the name of Jesus every seed of the devil every child of the devil that has crossed our path we undo every interaction every child of Agag every child of Agag every child 
blood of the seed of the giant we undo every interaction in the name of the Lord Jesus whoever has spilled blood because of us whoever has cursed us because we caused an abortion Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy, Lord, have mercy. let Ruby live and not die we repair the bridge we repair the bridge we prepare a church we repair the bridge we will not walk in this Anna we will walk in Anna Anna is the bridge of life Anna is the bridge of life wherever life has ceased wherever there is frustration Lord we ask for forgiveness for any dishonor in the name of Jesus you have come from you will look for that city you will look for the heavenly jerusalem your gate will be before you forget the past forgive yourself stop putting reasons why some things are not working you are remembering the past too much because the bible said my soul Hey, my enemies do not rejoice for if I fall down seven times I will rise up again if the foundation of your marriage was based on immorality forget the past and look to the future tell the Lord I receive forgiveness and Lord one thing I do I forget yesterday I forget the error of yesterday I see babies being released here. I see babies, babies, babies. I see coffins being broken. I see casters being broken. Death is leaving your house. Death is leaving your family. The habitual of death is destroyed. Wherever the preach was. Whoever I dishonored, Lord, I receive mercy. Forgive me, Lord. Whoever I spoke ill about, whoever had an ill feeling towards, Lord, I receive mercy. insulted my mother lord i'm sorry i insulted my father lord i'm sorry i am not forgiving my father lord take the wheel take my heart take my hand take my emotions the bridge must be repaired the bridge must be repaired the bridge must be repaired the, i'm a bridge repairer i am the repairer of the bridge in the days of my life in the days of Adam, preaching shall be repaired the error of yesterday will not be held against my tomorrow today i accept mercy and the lord shall hear my cry and the fish shall come out hey 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 hey, hey. the fish shall come out Siatatolish I see there's a repair. Hold them, hold them, hold them. There's a repair. Stop blessing.
gonna be yourself yesterday is gone today has come tomorrow is god's gift to you everybody hearing my voice i see a strong energy of god in this place that abortion god does not hold it against you he said he has forgotten it forgive yourself forgive yourself forgive yourself i see a baptism of forgiveness i see a baptism of forgiveness it's a new day for marriage has opened the doors for your visa has opened ah, the struggle is enough oh, it's enough it's enough holy ghost holy ghost yes holy ghost pick them out pick them out holy ghost yes 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 pick them out it's here jesus christ pick them out era, era. jesus 
pick them out. Every padlock. Every padlock. Pick them out. Padlocks. Even the ones you are not aware of. The, the reason for the dreams you have and the attacks. People treating you a certain way. They are covenants and fighting you. Oh. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh, la la ba tayo tayo da desi. As a prophet from today disappointments end from today disapprovals end I command by the heavenly authority I stamp approval on your traveling documents I stand approval on your marital destiny Jesus Christ Wajimoro mabo, e atana, oso baruko yate, me la badora hasa. Padlocks have been broken. Padlocks, look at that chain. Oh, oh, oh. By your own words, you are walking out of every trap. By your own words, you are walking out of every snare. Father, thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we give you glory. Thank you for this word. Let me pray for those that are online now. Whoever is struggling. Emotionally, speak to those online specifically. You are watching me, you are in tears right now. Life has not been easy for the past three months. Someone I'm watching, you are having a lot of mental. Stand as God's prophet. And on the anointing of a breach repairer, I declare that your life begins to function properly from tonight. I declare that your life begins to have color from tonight. That whatever it is that has laid siege over your joy, your peace, your excitement, I declare joy. I declare peace. I declare the operations of God's creative power begins to create opportunities for you now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stretch my hands to everybody online. I don't know, I keep seeing two women who are really believing God. They are believing God for me. So strong, you are in desperation. Desperation. Everything that has to do with papers, I release. Whoever was invited online, Lord, I command your power to find them wherever they are. Surprise them in this season. We await the testimony that in the next seven days, by tomorrow morning, the work of grace begins. By Sunday, we receive that testimony of mighty turnaround. I speak as God Somebody hear me online. You have an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. Something like lupus. As I speak right now, your joints are aching you. You have all sorts of patches on your skin. I speak the word of God over your body. I declare total healing, absolute health from the crown of your head to the soul of your head. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for that. But today you've shown us key for repair. Anointing I sense is anointing for power. God is really doing 
so many names are scrolling in front of me. When you go, put your staff. You are that person. That means you can't live anyhow again. That means you can't do what everybody is doing. Because if you are to repair the bridge, why are you exaggerating? Why are you enhancing the bridge? If you are not? Because like somebody who is supposed to repair your chair is breaking it further. You are the repair. I like to get the kids. Oh, okay, so it's not followed up. I, when I was out, I was the first person who said now we took out here. So, I lost the thing. The things that my friend I, I speak to my instinct. This father, I wife, I be a prophet of God. Sent me according to the man of heaven. Told me to do this. If it's okay, I open the door to you. I stand as God said. Whatever, even what I can hear from God, now you have to do the same. I speak as a prophet of God. I God. Angels of God blow window. They will start calling you. Jesus, I breach the breacher. I breach the breach. You will not suffer what your father suffered. You will not make money and people will come and enjoy it. It's of your family. I break the breach over your head. Let the strength of God be strong over you. Jesus Christ. Uncommon favor. Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord.
as we saw it, we activate the payment, we activate the transaction, we activate the breaching of every breach that is broken. Even in Jesus' name. Come 
Let's see if I pass to Ghana. Ghana so get ready. You know, as far as the apostolic visitation is, start their soldiers. At any given time, get ready. If you see prophetic visitation, you should know that. Gonna have a surprise. But he told me one of the songs that just God willing, let's believe God. Next week we are here live. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So don't don't miss it for anything. If you have your testimonies, please uh, please put our inquiry lines and our call lines online. Call call lines, inquiries, anything. You have testimonies, you can send to that number so that we get it. We'll be testifying about them. And um, all the testimonies that have come my way, I'm going to post them on my status uh, so that uh, you get blessed by it. So general inquiries, those are the numbers, WhatsApp, whatever it is, uh, call and WhatsApp. So you, you see the numbers there, email address, you can send us an email. Lift your right hand to Jesus Christ. Father, I bless your children. I declare your hand is multiplied over them. I pray right now in Jesus' name, uh, Lord, for those who celebrated their birthday in August. I've not prayed for you. Man. July 2. July and August. June, July. Okay, August... August, July, August, come. Come and pray for you quickly. Pray a lot. Uh, is this rainy season, babies? Or what? what are you? I have not prayed for July. I have not prayed for you. Oh, really? All right. Father, I bless your children. I declare that your hands multiply over them. This is a new year. Let the field yield results for them. Anything that is causing them to miss out on their harvest, this year I command that that thing is broken in Jesus' name. The fields are full of harvest. The yield results even in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the breach and I declare amplification of effort. Little effort, much increase. Even to your glory in Jesus' mighty name, we are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up, lift your right hand to you, Jesus. Say, I'm blessed. Yes. I'm ordained. I'm, ordained. I'm sanctified, sanctified as the repairer as the repair. of the breach in my family, in my life, in my institution. From today, I take my position. I repair 
all the breaches in Jesus name walk in the blessing of God shalom amen Lord Jesus, tonight I've realized the mystery of iniquity that is at work in the earth. I realize not submitting to you is allowing iniquity to work in me. Therefore, tonight I repent. I yield my member even as your instrument. I accept you, Jesus as my lord and savior today i enter the family of god because of your sacrifice thank you for accepting me and cleansing all my sins and my unrighteousness in jesus name amen